coming. Who? Who's coming? Mother. It's the Ben's Punani woman is Baby boys, baby girls, you need to hear this Baby sit down, sit down, receive this realness Make sure your cup's ready for the tea we are go sippy yo Hard time scrolling for your long shorts You might learn something you never know Could let you find, and she's one of a kind Don't say you mind, say you mind If I should say what I want I'll fuck up your day so I'll go offline but I know I'll take Every one of your jobs one day and I, I will suit you be news Ooh, and I Fuck you You predatory bitch fuck you Ooh. Quasi You mentioned me That's the last time you'll say my name for free and your headlines fucked you got dumped by this trust but above all this you tanked the economy and I, I will soon avara too, and I will fuck all you motherfuckers. Fuck you. I was trying to give raspy there. I hope you appreciated it because I wasn't giving the girls vibrato because they don't deserve it. They don't deserve it. They don't deserve breath control. They got a few runs, just a few runs, but they're not getting the vibrato and they're, they're just getting raspy. Yeah. Because I could have given it a Tony Braxton sort of touch, but I just kept it where I kept it. Chest voice, Kalechi, not head voice, but I wasn't paying attention. <laughs> Anyway, who are you listening to slash watching? It's me, Kalechi, the baby girl in the bestest place to be. And you are listening slash watching SYM, officially known as Say Your Mind, unofficially known as What What? That's right, suck your mum. And ooh, there are many, many straws, many straws to fling. Yeah, because motherfuckers tried me had tweets in their eyes but I can't see why they ever thought they could come for me <laughs> but I'm gonna drag their scalps away <laughs> anyway 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 I'm just gonna get through all that there is to get through for today there won't be any tarot per se because I mean I might put a smidgen of tarot in the thing but there are there are way too many serious things to cover today for me to even waste time. Um, I wasn't even sure if I was going to record today or continue recording because, you know, I've been toying, toying with this whole thing about podcasting for a bit. But the events of the last seven days, ha, ooh, Chile, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I understand why more than ever there is a need for a podcast like mine because there are certain media outlets, a few media outlets that aren't worth even 
like existing or bullshit all there to serve white supremacy however leftist they might see themselves but we're going to get into that shortly what have i been doing in the last week well apart from staving off um torrents of um racist abuse and threats because of navara media and gb news i have actually been doing some bits regarding the book um you can see up here i've actually got the hardback version of edge of here now and it's absolutely beautiful but i don't i genuinely don't even feel like talking about it big up my baby boy kevin morosky like love you to death happy birthday king um but yeah i did my first event talking sci-fi and speculative fiction at brixton house courtesy of roundtable books and dark matter um and of course trapeze the publishers um it was amazing i was in conversation with courtier newland and temi o and it was hosted by aqua and it was wonderful to be talking about my book you know what that i'm proud to have written and of course i don't want to get distracted by all the fuckery that's been happening even in my tone you can really hear it like i get into a certain zone where i'm just like you know what <laughs> you want to make me the bad guy the bad guy chun lee um yeah i get into a particular zone where it's just like if you test me in this zone i will annihilate everything everything that you hold dear i will take everything out i'll rip everything to shreds but let us continue so it was great it was great to talk about the book that i put so much effort into and life into and it was great to hear other science fiction writers talking about their work it's absolutely fascinating how our kind of all of our thoughts as black writers sort of intermingle super super fascinating um and it was lovely to sign books it really was like i feel like in the midst of how down or annoyed i feel by a number of things and angry i feel about a number of things i'm so so touched and thrilled that i could sit at a table and sign copies of my very own book like it's actually mad it's actually mad like man's an author you see it it's wild i uh, you know never would have made it <laughs> wrong 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 jonathan be like that song again a fucking again um but yeah super super proud um to have been able to sign some copies because the people who attended the event were able to get their copies three weeks or buy their copies three weeks in advance so that i guess the next time that people will be able to get copies will be when they pick it up two days before the official publication date um at the barbican where i'll be doing um the in conversation and evening with kalechi okafo and that's me in case you didn't know and um the host of that the person moderating the conversation will be the baby boy richie brave so that's going to be absolutely wonderful i've got a special guest for you as well those who are into the spiritual aspects of the bits that i do you'll be super excited about the special guest um so uh, yeah that all happened and lev did an intensive um swim course for the week um he goes swimming weekly but um i wanted to kind of put him on this swim course um with his usual teacher um this intensive course so he'd go every day before nursery and my god it was so trying in the sense that seeing him in the water being so brave and like he's he's like learned so much he's really really good um there was a point though where he was playing with these other children like he was in his cohort he like he's own he's the only like well he's you know mixed race but you know the only child that's not white that was there and one of these children started playing rather aggressively with him in the pool they were all older as well because he's doing so well they put him with um the older lot slightly older like they're probably like um seven um whereas he's going to be four so they're playing rather aggressively with him and no it was just the they they yeah but i don't know like it just reminded me you know like when you do this sort of thing where you're constantly talking about the things that are happening in the country that's happening in the world like you're probably aware of more things than the average person in terms of like bad things do you know what i mean 
So when they were doing that, all that came to my mind was Shukri Abdi, like rest in peace, baby girl. Like, I don't know, I just felt so sad. I felt so sad. And because of all the conversation that's been happening around like Lucy Let Be and the um, assumption of innocence as it pertains to white women, white people, um, white children, because when I was reading the case and I've read the, that case on here before about what happened, and how one of the children especially had even said that they wanted to kill her like it's it's really worrying and I think everything just came to a head for me when I was just replaying all of that and I just thought rah like you I think sometimes I have to be able to separate the social commentator from mummy from like being a mum because otherwise you're just walking around like filled with anxiety like all of the time but it was a lot for him I know that he's a strong boy but I think that week was a lot for him as well because he got he felt rather like ill afterwards but then a lot of, I think that that's also nurseries and I keep telling them that there's a certain thing that they do at that nursery that I find rather un un unhygienic and I've been telling them but anyway um and I know that nurseries, all of these things go around, but he just had a tough time this week. But, you know, he made it through the majority of his um, swim sessions anyway. So that was I was handling that as well. So even so if I sound tired, it's also that on top of everything um, dealing with that. But um, yeah, that that's been my week that's been my week so far um what did I miss out oh oh so I was looking into progressed astro you, you know um astrology astrological progressions so what that means is that um the way that our birth charts work is that the planets are always moving right so if you looked at your date of birth and then you looked at your progressed chart it will show you um, a new sort of birth chart based on your original birth chart but based on how um incrementally the planets move um yeah based on birth charts basically and so it was interesting for me to look at my progress chart recently and see that my mercury is now at 22 degrees of scorpio when in my birth chart my actual birth chart my mercury is two degrees of scorpio so i feel like i have grown so much in how I convey and um, talk about and process and interrogate very hard slash like dark difficult subjects like I love that for me because essentially when I've moved through Scorpio 22 degrees of Scorpio so we've only got like mm, six seven eight no we've got like seven no yeah seven degrees left of that and then I'll move into Sagittarius which is the teacher the teacher yeah so I move into the teacher um so it's like I'm learning investigating interrogating figuring out really understanding like the underbelly of society and how to convey what I see and at some point I move into Sagittarius where I'll be able to share the things that I see I mean I share it now but really really teach the things that I um that I've learned and the ninth house took you know takes it further afield as well so I imagine it going further than I even realize um so I just wanted to share that and then I saw something else was it by Novi Brown she says um women are in for a rude awakening with this Aries North Node Chiron Aries and, and Leo Lilith transit especially Cancer Capricorn and Libra women I'm a Libra woman. Your ideals around family, marriage, relationships and legacy will drastically be shifted. Your approach to romance, love and dating will shift. So true. Aries brings conflict, war, fights where you have to learn to defend and protect yourself. Very true. Leo Lilith will bring about the people who've been um, will bring out the people who have been acting like they are a hero when in reality they are tyrants with boot bootleg crowns I'm going to read that again for impact um and that Aries North node is so so interesting as well because my it's a nodal return for me my natal um North node is an Aries um anyway Aries brings conflict war fights where you have to learn to defend and protect yourself and that's what we're going to be talking about this week aren't we how I have to had to protect myself against the tyrants with their bootleg crowns that see themselves as heroes um read that again Aries brings conflict war fights where you have to learn to defend and protect yourself 
Leo Lilith, that means the black moon Lilith is in the sign of Leo, will bring out the people who've been acting like they are a hero when in reality they are tyrants with bootleg crowns. So that goes for Aaron Bastani, Michael Walker and Ash Sakar. I think that one's definitely about you, but we'll talk about what that means later on. Tyrants with bootleg crowns is in fact what you all are. But we'll get into that. Um, So I just thought I'd share that tidbit about astrology. So instead of reading one of the letters out this week, I thought, why not? Let me move this mic. Let's hope it doesn't cut out. (sighs) Okay, still there. Why not do um, a reading about how best to navigate these times where there are lots of um, falsehoods around, false prophets, a lot of people around who have ulterior motives and don't want the truth to shine. What is the message for this time where we're trying to navigate a lot of misinformation online? Okay, what does spirit have to say? Because I feel like I need this reading and I feel like I probably wouldn't do the reading for myself if I'm just sat at home so let's see what the message is um hmm. i didn't even set up the tarot camera so i'm just going to try and hold it up to the screen oh that flew right out one sec got it poised oh of course you'd say poised ancestors of course you would because every time it's like oh when they go low you don't go lower leave that to us no sometimes i want to be an ant yeah i want to be an ant find me find me that's how small i want to be motherfuckers anyway let's see what the next card is here okay nice nice good that scene i like that one i've just pulled a card from the dickhead in recovery affirmation card deck i would recommend that lots of people buy themselves this affirmation card deck called um affirmations for a dickhead in recovery because some of you are far from recovery um okay the first card (laughs) lol ace of cups second card page of cups in reverse ten of cups in reverse and then poised okay so the first card being ace of cups i don't even know how clear that will be there we go ace of cups so ace of cups i feel like we're being told in the it's so hard i hate messages like this basically the whole reason that we're being distracted by fuckery is because we have so much to give and we should just never stop giving never stop and all of these are cups as well which is so important um it's yeah it's so important because i don't have any um I don't have any swords, I don't have any wands, I don't have any pentacles, all cups, because a lot of this is emotional, like, well, our emotions are being called to the fore, a lot of intellect is being just thrown out of the window, Um, and it's not a time for action also, which is why I think that um, there are no wands here, and, you know, pentacles are left out of it, because it's just like, forget about the career aspects of things, forget about those sorts of things, Ace of Cups says, and I, there's this white dove holding an olive branch at the top of the cup as well. And you know me, I'm not one to preach forgiveness. I'm really not. But I think why I'm being drawn to that is the, um, the line when Jesus was upon the cross and he said, forgive them, Father, for they know not what they do. It's interesting, isn't it? Ra, not you giving me a sermon today. Because why would Jesus have to tell God to forgive them for they know not what they do? Because God, God is, you know, supreme, right? And so what did Jesus envisage that God was going to get so vexed at what everybody was doing to him and how cruelly he was treated that God was going to like, um, you know, jump in and, and bad everybody up. Um, like he done the, you know, like God has done, um, in the old Testament. And so I feel like the reason that that comes up is because, somebody like me because i feel like this is a bit of a self-drag somebody like me i work on principle you fuck around you're absolutely going to find out and a lot of you have twitter fingers and you sit up there all day like typing like fucking idiots going or going on news stations talking like fucking idiots because to you it's just a game right to you it's just ha 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 we can say this and it's fine like i always but i can back my chat 
So the energy that I have online that I have on a podcast is the exact same energy, if not more, that I have in person. Right. So this is a public service announcement like chat shit get banged is an absolute it's 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 a moral code but this card comes up to say that sometimes it's not about your principles it's not about like you know fuck around and find out and any of that stuff sometimes just let people play themselves out of the game let people play themselves out of the game you haven't got to you don't you don't have to worry about being like ref did you see that ref let let them play because you're gonna you're gonna play yourself you're gonna play yourself you're gonna try a move and you're the one that's gonna snap your leg in every possible direction it's you the page of cups here comes up in reverse because it's saying like no i'm not telling you to go out there and start like saying to people no it's fine for you to treat me this way and it's fine for you to behave like this no we can have boundaries we can have boundaries but we should never close off our capacity to love and I feel like coming back from Peru I feel like I say that at some point in every fucking episode but since coming back from Peru I've talked a lot about the most challenging part of um taking part in the ayahuasca retreat was integrating the things that I learned and it's so hard when you see people absolutely playing in your face to the extent that they're putting you in potential danger and not be like, I will fuck you up. Instead, you have to be like, OK, all right, this is one for the ancestors. They've got this because you don't want me to have it. If I have it, we're all going to have a problem. So I hear that it's not about going out and necessarily like chatting to people and doing all of that. It's just like fall back and let spirit do what spirit does the ten of cups comes out in reverse because there are blessings in things that you might not even realize sometimes people move like i feel like the universe uses people to move mad to jolt um a certain a blessing that you wouldn't have got you wouldn't have gotten otherwise you know them machines so basically i went with richie to that morley's pop-up that's at the um the standard the standard hotel it's at there in the inside their restaurant called the double standard so morley's has a pop-up there and then they've got this um you know those machines that you put a coin in and it like it's got a claw and then it grabs a, um, a prize and they strategically place some of the prizes where you absolutely cannot reach them so I feel like sometimes life is like that. Sometimes white supremacist patriarchy coupled with, you know, one of its children, capitalism, means that certain blessings are lodged in certain places. Oh, that is a word. Certain blessings are lodged in certain places that you would not be able to reach them if it were not for the universe to jolt it for you, to shake the machine for you, rage against the machine, shake the machine for you. So then that blessing becomes dislodged and therefore you can have it. The blessing was always yours, but people thought that it were playing in your face by lodging it in such a way that you would not be able to reach it. But then with a little bus bus from the universe, from God, with the help of your ancestors, absolutely not just shaking the table, but shaking the rascal art machine, it helps to loosen the blessing. And while the shaking of that machine might have you being like, what the fuck? Like, oh my God, what is happening? There is, there's beauty to come out of it because certain eyes sometimes won't see you or would not have known of your existence. They wouldn't have known about you. They wouldn't have known certain things were it not for those who uh, profess themselves to be your antagonist to bring their um, attention to you because light is light, baby. Light is light. So even when you think that you're shining a light on me in order to cause me harm, you're also shining a light. That means my glory will become even more brighter. So those who didn't see me before, oh baby, they see me now. All right. So that's why the Ten of Cups is there, because it's like even in the most raggedy of circumstances, there are things that you are being gifted that you wouldn't have gotten otherwise had the situation not been raggedy. Of course, I would love it to be a different way. Of course, I would love for us to have unraggedy circumstances and the things just come to you regardless. But sometimes it'd be what it is, you know, it'd be like that. From the Dickhead and Recovery Affirmation cards, we've got some call it quitting. I call it realigning my cuteness with my purpose so I feel like that spirit again <laughs> telling me to stand down because the rage that I felt the past few days the rage it can't it, it's no longer even we can't even call it rage anymore we have to call it rage the rage that I've been feeling huh let me not 
let me not even say what's in my mouth to say because they'll come and carry me for this from this place but some of you absolutely do not know who you're fucking with you absolutely do not some call it quitting I call it realigning my cuteness with my purpose. I need to stay on job. So many of us need to stay on job, whether it's your workplace, whether it's a relationship, whether it's family members. It can, or sometimes it's even you. Sometimes you're the enemy of progress fashioned against yourself. Like, stop doing that, you know? Um, realigning your cuteness with your purpose. Stay on course. Remember your assignment, which is to love and to be loved and to share as much love as possible in this life like that is what we're called to do and to make sure that we tell like you you can't have love without truth so anybody who thinks that they're loving and they're lying you're lying about loving yeah you are lying about loving if your love includes and involves lying and this is why it's imperative to speak truth to power because i understand that to be an embodiment of love i must say the truth i must tell the truth and anybody who stands in the way of me telling that truth or tries to humiliate or denigrate me for telling that truth i promise you i promise you with all that i know and i've seen in this realm and the next thunder will fire your pussy hole thunder will enter the lightning of the ancestors of the divine the divine creator will enter your anus and blow you up from the inside i promise you that I promise you. Number 48, poised, is what we get from the wisdom of the Oracle deck. Let's see if you can see that. Poised. Jonathan will be like, why didn't you use the camera? Because I don't fucking want to. Now, why am I in it? And you could have did it. See? I I did it because you never apologized. That's why I don't fucking, I don't fucking want to put the effort in to setting up another fucking camera for this fucking podcast. How about that? (sighs) Anyway, back to poised. The Oracle's message. You can be assured that you are ready for anything right now. (laughs) Oh, I am. Touch a button now. You know what you need to. Your skills are sharp. You've come to this place armed with wisdom and knowledge. And you sense a new phase of your life about to begin. Ooh, drag me. People respond to your confidence and trust you. This is an auspicious time to begin new things. Wow. Um, Let's see protection message. Um... let's see i like this protection message it says you're not ready to move forward at this time and that has to be okay be poised in the face of demands and deadlines pretending you know what you're doing works sometimes but if you adopt a fake it till you make it attitude it will land you in some muck now this is not the time to wing it and deliver something half finished it's okay to postpone things until you are really ready it's better to disappoint others now than wish you had later I'm going to read that again for some of you that I know will be listening as a result of the title of this podcast. You're not ready to move forward at this time and that has to be okay. Be poised in the face of demands and deadlines. Pretending you know what you're doing works sometimes. But if you adopt a fake it till you make it attitude, it will land you in some muck. Guess where the muck now is. Guess where the muck is. Yes, you've now arrived in the muck because you said that you wanted to fake it so you made it and you thought that you could fake it with me. You thought that I was the one. You thought that I was the one that you could try it with and we're we're about to learn why you shouldn't have done that. As for me, prosperity message, you have every reason to feel confident. Everything you need to make your success concrete is now at your disposal. You can take action knowing you are ready to step into your power. Absolutely. Into your light. Absolutely. And into your service to the world. Bomba. The direction you're moving in is your destiny. Your soul is smiling with joy as you align with this truth. Align realigning with my cuteness you see how the message is great for me but it's terrible for some of you because i don't mean personally i like to mind my business i say this all the time i like to mind my business i don't like to drag too too much but if you try me huh if you try me you're gonna have to buy me okay that's the that's the word for today anyway let me not talk too much i ended up doing a little bit of tarot there what we're going to jump to now before i get into all of the things is an interview that i did with um syrah 
Rao, as well as um, Regina. They're both wonderful, wonderful women who created um, um, a whole movement and they've got a documentary called Deconstructing Karen. So, the, and they've also got a book that's called White Women, Everything You Already Know About Your Own Re- um, Racism and How to Do Better. So that's by Syrah Rao and Regina Jackson. Um, they also have a documentary, like I said, called um, Deconstructing Karen. It says here, Regina Jackson and Syrah Rao have lo- um, launched Race to Dinner, a movement to inspire white women to confront themselves and to acknowledge their own racism and complicity in white supremacy. It's funny because I feel like I talked about that. I feel like many people have talked about that. The dinners will remind you of your favorite childhood memory of playing the game Clue. The most dangerous person in the room is never the obvious suspect. What if the Bible thumping conservative Trump voter isn't any more racist than the liberal yoga teacher who screams love is love? What if well in intentioned liberal white women actively play a role in upholding racism and white supremacy in this provocative documentary white women experience radical honesty about racism their daily role in upholding it their conditioning to ignore it and the essential part they can play in tearing down the um, the systems that are killing black and brown people every single day the premise is simple what if white women could and would show up to help end racism Watch out, Karen and Becky. Watch out, Karen and Becky are coming to dinner. That's what it says on their site. Um, it was amazing talking to Syrah and um, Regina. I'll let you listen to that now before we launch into everything else that's connected with this chat. Catch you in a bit. Regina and Syrah, thank you for joining me to discuss deconstructing Karen. Wow. Wow. Thank you for having us. No, you yeah. really, you really did something. When I tell you that my my blood, my blood was hot, my, my my blood was hot. You know, the moment everyone entered and sat at that dinner table, and I heard, "I am just happy to be colorblind." I said, oh. <laughs> "It has begun. It has begun." <laughs> but um. I've had the pleasure, the honor of watching your incredible um, film, Deconstructing Karen, which um, we can call a documentary, right? Yes. Right. And, um, you know, to talk to the listeners about how this came about, um, Race to Dinner was um, an initiative founded in 2019 by yourselves. And so could you talk to us a bit about that? Because what I love also is that this was before 2020. So this was before the Black Square summer of 2020 and people (laughs) going, oh, my God, racism exists. Oh, my God, what you what you, yeah, wow. I see you as visionaries because this, you know, really set the stage for what was to come next in terms of what happened March 2020 and onwards. But you starting Race to Dinner, Um, in 2019 what spurred you to want to do that because i can't imagine myself wanting to sit at a table with white women and talking to them about race because if there are sharp objects about it's not going to be safe for any of us in that situation (laughs) well it's it's a very interesting uh story Mm. syra ran for office she said she had the um privilege to run for office and she needed to do that or she needed to shut up. So she ran for office against a like 25, 30 year Democratic long term Congresswoman. And Cyrus' whole campaign was anti-racism. And she would give talks. She was always trying to um, get people to work for her or support her. So she would give talks and every time she spoke, white women would line up to have a conversation with her and what they wanted to say is not me. I'm not racist. Okay. So this went on and Syra was carrying, you know, the, the tea, the coffee, the lunch, plus paying for a babysitter for a kid and a former white friend of mine in the neighborhood. We live pretty close to each other says to me, I'm done with Syra. She hates white people, but, if you can get her to go lunch with me, I would love that. So I go to Cyrus because I was working on Cyrus campaign. Mm. And uh, Cyrus says, Regina, I'm not doing that anymore. She said, um, these white people aren't going to vote for me. 
She said, but if your friend will host a dinner and invite some white lady friends and you do it with me, we'll do that. Take it away, Cyrus. <laughs> yeah. So that's, we did it. We did it. And by the way, the straw that broke that Karen's back, the reason she said that I, uh, I hate white people is that I said that Beto O'Rourke was a white savior and I would vote for him if I lived in Texas and I just donated to his campaign because multiple things can be are in fact true. Um, but we had the dinner, we had the dinner and it was full white woman Broadway musical, like crying, tears, shaking back, you know, laps around the table and shaking back and forth. And so I posted about it on Facebook the next day and it went viral. The Facebook post went viral. We had hundreds of white women in our comments saying, I want to do a dinner. I want to do a dinner. You know, like the black squares, put the hands yeah. up. And uh, Regina and I were like, you know what? If we are educating these women for free anyway, we might as well start a business. And Regina came up with the great title, Race to Dinner, and it was born. And yes, indeed, it was a full year before white people discovered systemic racism and promptly forgot um, a couple months. Oh, thereafter. they forgot. They forgot immediately. Remember, they were so, so we could we could get back outside. Oh yeah, that's it. I don't want to know about racism again. Yeah. Don't ever talk to me about that R word again. Yeah. Um, but I I think it's phenomenal work. I think it's such brave work because I just don't think it's something that all of us can do. I remember the Blue Eye Project. Um, was yes. Susan? Yes. Jane and Elliott. Jane Elliott, and seeing that yes. you know. And she, do you know, I don't know if um, you heard about this. She did the same project in Britain. Yeah. She, yeah. And she said she would never, ever come back here to do it again, ever. The way the reaction she received from doing it here, she said she's never seen anything like it. You know, like, and what's funny about it is because people tend to think, um, unfortunately, that racism doesn't exist in Britain. But because of the yeah. very, um, I don't, I, how do I explain it? Um, the the kind of hyper insidious way that racism works in Britain, it means that it likes to go undetected by from uh, you know by onlookers. So Jane Elliott arrived and she thought, oh, okay, I've got this. And the pepper that they showed her. She said, I'm not, I'm not coming back to that place. I'm not doing it with them again. So I say all of that to say, why don't you come and do race to dinner in Britain? <laughs> we, we just At did the two Yard. events in London and one in Bath. So we were just yeah. in Great Britain. And, um, you know, it really was wonderful. And, you know, no white people admit to being racist, mm. you know, because they see racist as the Klan's hat and the Nazis. And, so they won't admit to being racist. But that's our whole thing. Let's sit down. Let's have honest conversations. And let's tell the truth. Inch, I love that. That's my favorite thing. Like, let's just tell the truth. What was it like? Because I could not make the, the screenings in London, well, the, the screening in London and what was just generally happening when you were over here, unfortunately. What was that like? How did it differ? Well, I mean, to, go ahead, Cyrus. Go ahead. I thought it was, I thought it was great. I mean, I thought that um, it was, you know, look, white British people always like to pretend like racism exists in America, which doesn't even make any sense because the British, the white Brits were the OG colonizers. Like white Americans are you white British people it doesn't even make any sense. Right. So we, I mean, I felt like the, the white folks who showed up and a lot showed up were really there for the right reasons and wanted to have the conversations. And there were tons of black and brown folks, which was really exciting. People who said, you know, this work has given them sort of courage to have these conversations in, um, their own spaces. But I want to add two things about Britain in particular. Mm -hmm. Number one, I worked in London one summer, mm -hmm. summer, summer of my second year in law school, and I got out of my taxi. It was the first time I'd ever been in mm -hmm. the UK, and an, a, an Indian American guy was going to be my office mate, and he said to me, I just want to warn you, the racism here against South Asians is like unparalleled. And I'm like, oh yeah, whatever. I grew up in Richmond, Virginia. I got this, yes. you know? So I go up the stairs, and I'm lugging my suitcase. And I get to the top and my law firm is paying a very a ton of money for, for my apartment in South Kensington. Mm -hmm. And a white, old white lady 
was the landlord. Mm -hmm. And I went to shake her hand and she put her hand behind her back and dropped the key on the ground because yeah. she didn't want to touch me. Sounds like and my so ladies. It was like literally it was it was seriously crazy. And Regina and I last year did an interview with Channel Four in your in your great country. And um <laughs> It was a black woman <laughs> journalist who did the, it was going to be like an out, it was going to be a long story on us. And, mm -hmm. and the sort of the ending was a Zoom interview she did with the two of us. And she asked me at the end, because I just tweeted, it was right after Rishi Sunak, you mm -hmm. know, white supremacy and brown face becomes mm -hmm. elected. Mm -hmm. And I tweeted that. Nothing huge. Like, yes, he's a horrible person. A fact. Right? A fact. It, it's a fact. It's a fact. And so... Um, she asked me about it. What did you mean about that? And so I explained, long story short, we get a, we get a, a call the following week from her saying this has never happened in her career, but her bosses, the good white liberals of Channel 4, killed the interview, killed the story, saying it, it violated ethical standards. And it was based on something I had said. And I said, is it this thing? She said, yes. Long story short, she left because she said the way they talked about you was so vile. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, how can these people claim to not be racist? I mean, literally, the Br the monarchy, the queen. Oh. Like, look at the British Museum. Oh. You know, it's wild. It's, it's all beautiful songs that you're singing right now. And I love the entire playlist because this is what <laughs> I'm shouting about all of the time. I shout it, I whisper it. That's the whole um, nature, the whole premise of this podcast because Britain, there was something that you said in the documentary that I was just like, ugh, like I'm so pissed that I missed the screenings and I missed the time that you were here because I want to do it again. I would love to do all of this again, have a screening again, but get some people in the room that would have avoided being in the room at that time. So you could really see the underbelly of Britain and see what we are talking about. We can, Regina, let's go back. Let's do it. Let's okay. do it. <laughs> let's, let's, we'll come let's, back. Yeah, let's do it. The reason I say that is because you mentioned how important niceness is to white women. And when we think about the construct of white womanhood or um, womanhood with a capital W as is has been purported and sold to us throughout the centuries, white supremacy, white, um, you know, um, hetero uh, uh, patriarchy um, needed white women to be or white womanhood to be a particular way so they could always have justification for going to war so they could fight for it. So all the rest of us aren't included in that because they're not trying to fight for us. So mm -hmm. then one of the tenets of white womanhood or womanhood with a capital W surviving is niceness because that niceness is so inextricably linked to white supremacist heteropatriarchy. Because if you hurt our nice women or if we feel like our nice white women are in danger, we have every right to kill you, to annihilate you in order to protect them. And whether white women realize it or not, but more of them are starting to realize is that that niceness is what they weaponize against everybody else when they cry, when they do this, when they do that. So when you touched on it um, in the documentary, I had to just jump up and do a praise dance. I said, because <laughs> let us start talking about how niceness, you know, it's dangerous. It's killing us all. It's killing us all. Oof. There are so many uh, black, people who have been lynched in this country for not getting off the sidewalk when a white woman passes, asking a white woman for a glass of water, um, being a, you know, it's just, it's insane. And the biggest issue I have is the denial, the denial of whiteness and all of its violence. Yes. Yeah, I mean, I, I had the um, privilege of going and Kalechi, if you ever have the chance to Montgomery, Alabama, to see the slavery museum down there and the lynching memorial. And this is in the past hundred years. This is recent history. There's stone. My lifetime. Stone mm. What's that? <laughs> My lifetime. Yeah. I mean, it's it's like this black man was lynched for annoying a white woman. This black family with children was lynched for walking too close to a white woman. This, this white womanhood exists for this reason, exists for this reason. And, and pretending the feigned ignorance around it is the grand con. So let's pretend like it's not happening back to what Regina said. Like, let's not even acknowledge this. It's, it's, it's happening. And if you, if you don't acknowledge it, you can't change it. Hmm. And so that's all we're doing. We also have a book out 
called White Women, Everything You Already Know About Your Own Racism and How to Do Better. It's actually a New York Times bestseller, which is whoa, very whoa. exciting for us. <laughs> yes. And we talk about this perfectionism, white, white women perfectionism, white silence, white niceness, and how it is killing us all. White women are the foundation to white supremacy. And pretending that's not the case enables it all to flourish and continue generation after generation. That is so true. And I love that you phrase it that way, that white women are the foundation of white supremacy because they birthed the, we're talking about women who birth, you know, um, they birth the, the men who go on to do this, the people who go on to um, uphold and white perpetuate. supremacy and yeah. perpetuate it. So they go on to mm -hmm. do that. And so the only way, I love that you say it that way because oftentimes when we talk about white supremacist heteropatriarchy and all the ideological, um, you know, facets of that, people will say, well, I just don't know. What do you expect us to do? How do we get rid of it? We can't get rid of it in our lifetime. What do you expect us to do? And, and, so, when, and, and so when you actually say it that good. way, that you lot are the foundation, like white women, you lot are the foundation of that. If you can deal with your rotten soil, then that means that all of these things that are growing, that are poisoned, can't continue to grow. So if the foundation is dealt with, essentially the structure then has to change. And so right. I love that that is how you approached it because honestly, I, I just, I just, I just stay cussing people. So this, this is a, yeah. this is a great way to look at and, it differently. And I always say they know, they know. And what they do is they pretend like they don't know because once you acknowledge something, you have to make a choice. Yeah. You have to choose either I'm going to change or I'm going to continue. And when they see themselves as continuing, then they see themselves as a terrible person. So they never want to acknowledge it. So they don't have to make that choice. Yeah. And that's true as well. And I think that if your whole, um, identity if you if your whole identity has been structured around your um complicity and your tethering to white men when you are asked and white supremacy when you are asked then to divest from white supremacy you see that as meaning that you must divest from your white men and who wants to divest from family who wants to leave family behind because that leaves you open you know that leaves you vulnerable to attack that leaves you vulnerable to the violence of other people and I think that that also plays a role in it that like you say a lot of white women do know and so if we were just honest about the fact that like why did you not vote for Trump why why did you vote for him because there was something you you had a choice between a white woman and a white horrid racist man and you still chose the man it wasn't even that they said to you come and vote for a black man or come and vote for a black woman they said vote for a white woman and you said nope mm -mm. You know why? Well, yeah. You know why? Because they hate themselves and they hate each other. So white women's lack of self-love and deep hatred and competition with each other, they did. They threw one of their own under the bus. Mm. So until and unless white women get themselves right and get right with each other, they will continue because if they're doing this to themselves and to each other and in this country, we have guns, guns are the number one killer of kids in this country, including white kids, mm -hmm. and they're not even showing up for their own kids. Mm -hmm. So that's, you know, if they're treating themselves, their kids and each other this way, imagine how they treat us. And we don't have to imagine it because we know how they say, treat Yeah, them. yeah, yeah, yeah. And that's so true. Cause I remember looking at everything and going, wow, white women don't have a sisterhood. Like they no, don't no. have a sisterhood. And it's they interesting don't. to me because then I like to like look at the kind of um, et um, like etymological manifestations of things, right? So if we look at, for, for instance, Shakespearean theatre and how Macbeth, and we look at the three witches and how they were depicted, anytime white women are gathered as more than one, it is vilified. So in when you look at literature all throughout, they're not encouraged generally when you they're not encouraged to come together they instantly become witches and when we think about the Salem witch trials and things like that so it has been programmed into white women for a very long time that you are better apart do not you know join yes. together because where we see strength in numbers from the communities that we um you know where we originate from mm -hmm. our lineage there's not that they're not shown white women are not shown strength in numbers when they get together, historically speaking? Well, they compete right. against each other. They yes. get together and they compete against each other. They have to have the best house, the best dressed house, the best husband, the best kids. The, the best, best highlights. Kids. 
Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, oh, yeah. Yeah. so they, they are socialized to compete against each other. And, you know, I was so shocked to learn this. I was, do they really do that? And Sarah goes, yeah, they really do. Wow. Yeah. I mean, they like the, the, the way that their sisterhood is spin class, you know, <laughs> their sisterhood is happy hours. Uh, do they have each other's backs? No, they don't have their own backs. Yeah. They don't have their children's backs. And so it is, it is a white supremacy, colonialism, capitalism, patriarchy, all of this has snatched their souls. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. that is what we are dealing with today. We're dealing with this globally. It's happening in the UK. It's happening in the US. Look at climate catastrophe. Mm -hmm. That is white, that's all these things coming together. Look at what's happening in Maui. I mean, they're real estate developers preying on those folks's land. They're yes. people snorkeling. They're white tourists snorkeling in, yeah. in waters where dead bodies are floating. I mean, this is a lack of humanity. You know, they've, yeah. they've lost it to the extent there ever was humanity because this country at least is a country founded on genocide of indigenous people, yeah. genocide and enslavement of African people, yeah. Chinese exclusion mm -hmm. act, operation wetback, Muslim bans, Japanese internment. These are actual things in this country and people are like oh my god what's happened to america we've lost our soul what kind of fucking soul did america have to begin with talk with about that it talk about it because when even when and this is my problem and i love that when you mentioned um Syrah, about um i used to be a white feminist a uh, white woman trapped in a brown body. Because I think so many of us, when we first enter into feminist discourse, we come through the pathway of white feminism and then we've got to go, whoa, what the fuck am I doing? Like, whoa, this is not my bag. <laughs> I need to come out of it immediately. Um, and then we start, you know, then we find where we fit. And I say that because I've struggled, for instance, with Obama, um, you know, where there would be certain things that he would tweet and he'll be like, this is not what we do as a nation. This is not who we are. And I'm like, when we as black people are purporting and are regurgitating rhetoric that is factually untrue. When we say we are not this, this is not who we are. Who is the we that we're talking about? If you're talking about America, exactly. this is exactly who America, like what and who America exactly. is. So exactly. can we, as you say, Regina, when do we start telling the truth? Because multiple things can be true at once. We need um, change in terms of who leads the country. We need all of those things, but also we do need the people who are doing those things to also tell the truth. Yes. Well, you know, that's our number one, that's our whole number one value is radical honesty. Mm -hmm. And we're always going to tell the truth. And yeah. if people's feelings get hurt, they get hurt, you know, <laughs> because it's not about your feelings. This is about people's lives and deaths, how they can live, how they die. So the we have got to start to tell the truth. And if we have to keep pushing that narrative, we're going to keep pushing it. Yeah. And Kalechi, further to that, you know, Rishi Sunak is a good example. If you look at the U.S., um, there uh, there's a bunch of other South Asians in, in the U.K. wreaking havoc. Yes. But if you look at the U.S., Kamala Harris is is half black and half South Asian, mm -hmm. and I'm very happy she's there. However. The first thing she did when she became vice president is go to Central America and look at about a bunch of brown faces and say, do not come. Yes. You know, yes. What what good does it? And we have Indian folks here, Nikki Haley, a guy named um, by the last name of uh, he's, he's an Indian guy running on on for the Republican Party, talking like all, all sorts of anti black rhetoric, all sorts of xenophobic rhetoric against himself and others. Yes. This is white supremacy making a full circle is when we black and brown folks internalize it and just spew out the same things that we have been taught, you yes. know? And so the work has to be decolonial work, right? Yes. It has to be it has to be anti-whiteness work for all of us. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, you're going to end up having a South Africa situation in this country because we're becoming blacker and browner. Mm -hmm. The census says in the next however de few decades, we will not be a majority white country anymore. Yeah. But if we don't do this work here, we're going to have a situation of, of, of like a minority white group still controlling everything, you know? Yeah. So we see it play we out all even have in to Jamaica. Yes, we all have to tell the truth. And we see it even play out in Jamaica. I went to visit Jamaica recently and, and it was fascinating to me that a country that is like 95% black people, a lot of the resources are not owned by black people in Jamaica. And we, of course, we know why when we think about things historically, but it's, that's the 
powerful nature of whiteness and white supremacy that even when the numbers are small, the impact is still so, so huge. Yeah. Um, yeah. And uh, there was you there was something that you mentioned there, even when we were talking about Rishi and the likes, when we consider the fact that whiteness as a construct, it shapeshifts. It shapeshifts yes. and what it cares is about yes. absorbing absorbing power. So regardless of our skin color, like it's about making us, you know, join. And this is exactly the way I feel about the monarchy. And like we said, multiple things can be true. The way that Meghan Markle was treated by Britain is abhorrent, like horrible. At the same time, when she's making a Netflix documentary and she's saying, you know, I was willing to join them as an organism. I could have made them faster, stronger, rah, 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 rah. It's like, baby girl, we don't want to make that institution faster and stronger no. because people will die um right so i think about that and i think about like you said the climate justice conversation um all the things that we're seeing happening and white women who are respected revered really put on a pedestal in um society are getting on stages at events and talking about overpopulation I get so triggered when white women, white people start talking about overpopulation because it's an eco-fascist myth that, oh, we're just, there's too many people. So when you mention about the census in a few years, you know, there's going to be, there are going to be less white people, you know, across the board. When you hear overpopulation, that is the preempting of what's about to happen. And it's like, well, if you slow down, and this is why we're seeing Roe v. Wade and everything being overturned, I would say, because it's to yes. force white people to have more children. To have babies, and, yes. right. Yeah, they could <laughs> care less about us aborting babies, but they want those white women having those babies. And there was an even a right-wing um, media guy who was on Instagram a few days ago, and what he said is, yes, we see this going into uh, one of those situations where, uh, what's that red, Syra, where the women are forced to have babies? Oh, the handmaid's oh, tale. Oh, handmaid's, handmaid's, handmaid's tale. tale. He said, yeah. yes, that's our vision. That's our vision for America. Yeah. He came out and said it. That's yeah. why Margaret Atwood could write that, though. That's why Margaret Atwood, she could put that out. And white women were fascinated by watching Handmaid's Tale. They were watching it under his eye, under his eye. They were watching it because I think that they knew that was what was coming. But it was funny that they would talk about it in a way that imagine if that ever happened. Well, it did. How do you think that the plantations <laughs> were filled? How do you think the plantations were filled? It, it's, it literally it actually happening. It actually happened. Yeah. And, and like, you know, Prince William and Kate going to Africa several years ago and talking about overpopulation meanwhile she was pregnant with their third child you yeah. know it, it's 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 all the same stuff it's it's all and that's what i think is amazing kolechi it's it's all happening right now and people are talking about it as it's dystopian yes you know that it's like science fiction and it's actually happening and this happening. is back to feigned ignorance yes. it is you know we don't have abortion rights now and and these newspapers are like doing story after story about this seventh grader was forced to have a baby and blah 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 nobody can, like where is where are the white women in the streets yeah white women were not in the streets last year when roe versus wade was overturned they were at spin class yeah they at were parties. at spin class yeah yeah and what were your tight core what will your tight core and your endurance do for you when the world is ending? What will you now do? Okay, you can raise your legs above your head. What will we now do with that information? <laughs> well, and the same thing goes to these billionaires, you know, these people who are destroying the world for profit. They're looking at building places in the desert where they think they're going to survive when the world is gone you're like get out of here yeah like leave it alone or wanting to go to another planet because they are already preempting destroying this but and so Sarah, when you say about um decolonization and decolonizing our minds decolonizing all of the things like our immediate environments and the world as a whole the importance of that is absolutely the fact that if we do not white supremacist heteropatriarchy only knows destruction so the longer That's we allow right. it to continue the more of the world is destroyed and i do believe that there is a point at which we can turn not even necessarily turn back all of the nonsense that's been done but we can at least slow it down a great deal and we can't really do that when we're still holding celebrities politicians all of these people in high esteem billionaires Agreed. in high esteem where we Agreed. are yep. struggling I agree. Yeah. And, and, you know, for me, just in the, in the context of climate, let's just use that as an example. Maui, 
Mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. One of America's crown jewels of colonization and, and rape tourism. I'll just say like raping the land and the people mm -hmm. tourism. We don't care that Maui just burned to the ground. So how are we supposed to get anybody with power and money to care about Bangladesh? What's yes. happening in Bangladesh? What's happening in Kashmir? What's happening in that part of the world? They just don't, they, we don't care about our own. Yeah. And I think that has been the most striking for a lot of people is like, you know, we've been screaming for the rooftops. People who look like the three of us here have been screaming from, yes. from the rooftops. And the thing that's sort of been gutting for me is watching white folks not caring mm -hmm. about their own children dying by guns and dying by climate catastrophe. Because if you don't mm -hmm. care about your own white kids, mm -hmm. how on earth are you going to care about anything else? That's, yeah, that's where so, we are. That's so true. And I wanted to touch on one of the women that's in the documentary when she says, you know, she talks about her son as a white male feeling victimized and all of that stuff. She was scary to me. But, you know, and so she says something like, how do I talk to my son? How, how do I talk to my son? And that scared me because I was like, fam, you can't talk to the child you birthed. You, if you can't, what chance do the rest of us have? You know, and so I just, like, I guess my question is, how do you keep the faith? Because I love how, you know, what the documentary explores and where it ends. And now you've got the book um, and, you know, it's doing so well as a bestseller and all of these things. But how do you, as um, two individuals, keep the faith? Because it scares me that white women can't talk to their husbands. They can't talk to their sons. And then they're out shooting people up in the streets. Regina? <laughs> you know, I am just one of those people that I don't really give up fuck what anybody else thinks. I don't care what they think about me. I don't care what they say about, I just don't care. So that allows me to be very free. <laughs> mm -hmm. Amen, amen. Um, I think for me, Kalechi, is I truly in the past, so I co-founded a movement to ban guns in America mm -hmm. and we had our first action in June and that's a whole other story. My faith has been tested this summer sincerely tested this summer and where I shake out Regina and I just had a race to dinner in South Florida this past weekend and we had three women how do we talk to our kids how do we talk to our son specifically and we were like you literally just talk to them you talk to them is what choice do we have Kalechi yeah. what choice do we have yeah. and if we want um humanity our own children, our own grandchildren, our own friends, ourselves to survive, we have to continue to have faith because they control everything. Yeah. You know, it would be very easy to just say like, fuck them, right? Mm -hmm. Which I want to say every minute of every day. Mm -hmm. Where does that leave us? Look who is who controls the resources. Look who controls our governments. Look who, yeah, the, the money and everything. And so yeah. Trying to get them to unfuck themselves is very important to that. And so I think that we keep the faith or I keep the faith in this moment today because there's no other choice. And I want my kids to be able to have food and water mm. um, as they grow into adults. I agree. And I mean, we're still there looking at Flint still not having clean water. We're talking about oh, a country that goes, we're the greatest country in the world. We are. This is the greatest country in the world. But fam, you don't have clean water. You don't. The water's brown. The water's brown. What do you mean? What do you mean? Like greatest country in the world where people are starving, like starving. You're talking about shithole countries. Have you looked at some of the areas like cities are going bankrupt? What? I know. <laughs> It's it's a weird bridges are collapsing. Dissonance. Yes, buildings are collapsing. Sink Subways holes. are collapsing. Sinkholes. Um, home, million dollar homes in in Colorado, Alaska, LA have burned and fallen into canyons, and we're like, oh my god, Taylor Swift's concert! <laughs> like, let's kill each other to get like literally knife fight each other to get tickets to that. I mean, it's a dystopian. We're living in dystopia. Yeah, and. Um Regina, how did you do with having that woman sat next to you? The one that she said, oh, Marnie. Ah. <laughs> oh, girl. <laughs> girl, it was hard. It was, it was very hard. I kept looking at her and she kept, you know, she, she wanted to debate me, but it was really tough. I mean, she was a, a piece of work and she never got, she, she never got back with us for feedback or anything, but, um, you know, I would say she, 
was as much in pretense as anybody I've ever seen at any of these dinners. Okay. You know, even though her husband is half Mexican. Yeah, well, she made know? sure to say She's that. Like, yeah. Yes, yes, yes. She's pretending that she doesn't know that this exists. Well, she even said, well, it may exist, but I don't know about it. Well, that's because you're in this little cocoon of whiteness. Yeah. You need to get out of your own community. You need to go to some cultural events. You need to spend time in other communities. And white people, they don't have to do that, especially in Denver. We call Denver white conda. <laughs> white conda. <laughs> <laughs> There's so many white people in Denver. Wow. Um, so that's really the issue. If you, if, if you keep doing what you're doing, you're going to keep getting what you got. And we're that way on um, getting to know each other and having community. We're that way on gun violence. We're that way on black community. So nothing much has changed, but that doesn't mean I'm going to stop doing the work. No, thank you so much for doing the work. And I really appreciate Genevieve, you know, um, like we know, of course, we know the importance of doing what we're all doing in this fight of, you know, anti-racism, deconstructing whiteness and all of the things that we see. But how important has it been for you personally having a white ally, a white ally who gets it? So when you say I don't trust white women, they don't get in their feelings like that one over there that started shouting up and down but you know that they they understand that i can understand why you would say that you don't trust white women how important has that been for you and doing the work that you do especially with race to dinner and getting this film out everything and the book how has it been for you in terms of allyship well, quite honestly, you heard me say, I, I, I don't trust white women, never have, never will, you know, and every once in a while, somebody will come and, and I'm not really interested in allyship. If you want to support me, I need you to be an accomplice. I yes. need you to get down in the dirt doing the work. So, yes. you know, white women come and go because yeah. At some point in time, their whiteness impacts their decision making, and I have to say goodbye. Yeah, yeah, and I would I would agree, Kalechi. You know, I've come around to the I don't trust any white women. There is a um, do I love some? Absolutely. Yeah, can we work with them? Yes, because that's what we do regularly. But in terms of trust, there's always a breaking point. There's always a point where their feelings get hurt. And all of the centuries of conditioning come spewing out. Yeah. And um, there's a breaking point. So this is a, you know, we are de like white women need to just get themselves right. Yeah. White women have to, and we have provided, you know, we have this book, we have this film, we do events all over the place. We, we, how much can we do? And, and at some point they want us to be their anti-racism nannies. Yes. And that's just not going to happen. It doesn't work, you know? I hear you. Because when you said it, I thought it was so refreshing and liberating to hear because I don't think I've... No, I have. I, I've said on the podcast before, if a white woman is smiling at me and she's telling me something, whatever she's telling me, I'm taking it as a lie. Like, I'm not... <laughs> I'm, if they're giving me directions and they're like, oh, so what you want to do? You just want to go straight down and then you want to go right? I'm doing the absolute opposite. I'm doing a U-turn. I'm going the other way. <laughs> going the other way. So... <laughs> Well, you know, Kalechi, I think one of the things that is true for black and brown women is we don't have the luxury of being up in our feelings about everything. Yes. We don't have the luxury of, you know, getting to not participate in our community. That's a privilege that yeah. white people have that we don't have. Yeah, we don't get to be loners, you know, we don't we don't get that like somebody shoots up a place um, wherever so many shootings have happened. My God, they shoot up a place and then instantly the media jump up and they're like, oh, they were a lone wolf. It looks like they were acting no. alone. But no. a brown skinned person can shoot up somewhere and then it's like, oh, well, we have to find the, you know, the, the organization. All the brown skinned of, people. What, yeah, why, why, why do they have to be part of an organization? Mm -hmm. Why couldn't they in, individually have just had enough? 
In the same way that you claim 100. that white people have had enough. Why couldn't they just as individuals had just had enough? And we don't talk enough. Well, you both clearly do. But the radicalization of white men is happening at an exponential rate because of the oh, globalization yes. that we have from yes. social media. So this fight about um, against people like Andrew Tate and things like that is so important because you don't know the things that these young boys, young women even are watching because there's that other one now. She's popped up, this white girl, something called Pearl. I don't know what her name is. But her video, I see it pop up on social media every once in a while. I'm like, this is extremely dangerous because she's essentially helping to groom young white girls, young white women into an into a narrative of being subservient to essentially subservient yes, to white yes, boys yes. and men. Yes. And so this whole cycle continues. continues, continues. You know, a good example of all of this is look at September 11th. And by the way, I was coming into the World Trade Center on September 11th, 2001. Wow. And I remember over, I left my apartment building as a model minority and I came home that night barefoot and bleeding as a terrorist. That's how fast it, it changes, like, you know? Yeah. And the yeah. Department of Homeland Security was formed overnight. You know, the destruction of how many countries at our behest happened after that. The criminalization of people who look like me happened like that. Mm -hmm. January 6th, we're not even calling that a terrorist attack. We're not. We're calling that an insurrection. <laughs> was there the criminalization of white people after that? That no. was white people. That was all fucking white people. Yeah. Was there even one iota of let's let's create the department of anti-white people after that? Oh, no. no, no, because that would have been a problem. Well, if I did that as a white person, you do it all the time. <laughs> the like, time. You do all it the every time. day. All the time. Well, what all if I had a white history month? You have a white history <laughs> life. <laughs> you have a white history. And also, actually, even that is inaccurate because we don't teach white history so as to pres um, to absolve white people of the guilt of facing head on the violence that's been committed. We just sort of talk about, oh, and then this sort of happened and there was this civil rights movement and where, hey, Martin Luther King- White savior, saved the way, everything saved the is white savior. White saviorism, you know, in Bath in the UK, there's only one line in like the heritage cultural center. Cause you know, the, the white Brits like to pretend like you all, not you, that yeah. they had nothing to do with the transatlantic slave yeah. trade. Yeah. Um, when they fund like the the banks in the uk funded the whole operation yep. and there's just one line that said there's sort of an unfortunate history around some of the buildings <laughs> yep. literally and then like a picture of the queen right next to it and, and that's what i'm saying so up. when so that's what i'm saying so when you went to bath and you did the talk i kind of know the kind of people who have showed who would have showed up so like you mentioned about you know um at the beginning of the documentary, Martin Luther King's speech that what, you know, I'm frustrated by is the silence of, you know, the, the these liberals, these ones, that's, that's what I'm more scared of. There is a whole big industry of liberal white people who can say just enough of the right thing so it looks like they've got it covered oh i'm happy to be uncomfortable no the hell you're not and everybody loves Ooh. everybody else's blacks browns they love that so you come over from america and you have this conversation with them are oh, they going to listen because at the back of their mind that's a you problem that's an america problem that's not our yes. problem then they have somebody yes. who's maybe co-hosting with you and it's a black person that they recognize same accent same everything then you'll see the man you know the the iterations, the, you know, the regurgitations of certain um, like law and myths start coming out of them the same way that we saw in the documentary. It is, it's tough, but I love that everywhere I look, we're doing the work and I'm just grateful that, you know, you're doing such amazing work. And um, so the, in terms of your book, we've now got it in the UK. It's yeah, you can get it anywhere. Perfect. We'll send you a copy after this. Just send us your address. We'll send you a copy. Perfect. Because it will be great to um, read and have a talk about that as well. But should you want to come back whenever, you know, let's, let's, let's do, do it. it. Regina. <laughs> let's, let's plan on 2024. Amen. Alleci. Let's plan. That would okay. be amazing because then we can talk about the book as well yep. and really see how people have, you know, what people have learned since um yes. wonderful conversation but wonderful. thank you both so much for joining thank me you. thank you for having pleasure. us <laughs> nice thank meeting you. you i look forward to keeping up with you <laughs> thank you so much okay. i'll speak to you soon bye okay bye. well i hope you enjoyed that conversation between myself um regina and sarah um go and get the book definitely definitely watch the documentary it is really something i think it's available on apple tv 
so you can watch it on there but um we'll look it up but don't be surprised that on imdb it's got three stars i wonder i wonder why i wonder who went on there and decided to keep going and you know keep, kept going on there to give it such low stars i wonder who i just wonder who would have thought like who would have thought to do that but again when you don't want to hear eventually one way or another you'll feel well going from talking about deconstructing one karen let's go to another karen on so you mad well of course two slaps in your chest syrah and regina for doing such incredible work for being such baby girls i rate it i respect it thank you um but yeah let's jump from deconstructing one karen to deconstructing another so a video went viral uh, I want to say uh, last week where we saw a woman who was filmed kicking and slapping um, a horse. She's reached. <laughs> Sorry, I'm laughing at her name. I'm laughing at her name. Sorry. Woman filmed kicking and slapping horse cleared of animal cruelty. Remember that, Remember that there was that footballer. What was he doing? Was he like he was doing something mean to a cat let me look it up he was doing something mean to a cat and they everybody was quick then to be like no um you know he must feel the full um breadth and depth of the law and all of that um kurt zuma that was his name a video of west ham footballer kurt zuma um he was ordered to let's see compare it west ham footballer kurt zuma ordered to do community service over cat abuse he's also been banned from keeping cats for five years after footage of him kicking and slapping pets went viral the premier league footballer kurt zuma has been ordered to carry out 180 hours of community service and banned from keeping cats for five years um for kicking and slapping his cat the 27 year old west ham and france defender prompted widespread condemnation after footage filmed by his brother Brother, Johan Zuma emerged of Zuma uh, and volleying the pet across his kitchen before throwing a pair of shoes at it and slapping its head. Sentencing the brothers at the 15 minute hearing, the district judge Susan Holdham said, Both of you took part in this disgraceful and reprehensible act with this pet and uh, with this pet cat. You must be aware that others look up to you and many young people aspire to emulate you. She added, The cat looked up to you to care for its needs. On that date in February, you did not provide for its needs. Um, the judge said both men expressed genuine remorse. Um, Kurt, uh, Kurt Zuma was also ordered to pay court costs of nearly nine thousand pounds his brother was ordered to carry out 140 hours community service and also banned from owning cats for five years um yes so that was when was that that was 2022 june 2022 that that they came to that conclusion so now we are in uh, august 2023 and it says here, Sarah Moulds, of course, you're mouldy, your pom pom's mouldy, I can just tell, I can tell you've got a mouldy pom, you're nasty, rancid woman, Sarah Moulds, 39, Jesus, says she received death threats and family went into hiding after video went viral, a teacher who lost her job after she was filmed kicking and striking a horse has been cleared of animal cruelty, so both words i'm reading it from the same website right both articles are from the guardian the only thing that changes is that with two are black men and this is a white woman with um straw like looking hair sarah moldy also known as sarah molds um was found guilty of not causing unnecessary suffering to a protected animal her gray pony named bruce almighty and because you named him bruce almighty god will strike you down god will strike you down for the way that you treated that horse she was filmed by a hunt saboteur group striking the animal in gunby lincolnshire on 6th of november 2021 and lost her job as a primary school teacher a month later and damn right somebody who is kicking and slapping horses does not need to be anywhere near children oh i can't here we go i'm looking at sarah molds 39 and i can't i can't believe that she could be accused of such a thing i don't know what i expect a horse abuser to look like or an alleged horse abuser but not her 
I'm not shocked because she's white and blonde. I'm shocked because she's a primary school teacher. And surely primary school teachers don't behave in this way. Isn't that's what you'll tell us next? That it's not because she's a white woman that you're shocked. It's because she's a primary school teacher or she's a nurse or she's a this or she's a that. Anyway, no school should give this woman a job. No school, no primary school, no secondary school. No school for rats and mice should give this woman another job. She was filmed by the Hunt Saboteur group, rah, 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 rah. She lost her job as a primary school teacher a month later. She was later prosecuted by the RSPCA under the Animal Welfare Act 2006. After a three-day trial at Lincoln Crown Court, she was cleared by the jury who had deliberated for more than five hours. Molds and several friends and family also in court wept as the verdict was delivered. Giving evidence during the trial, Mould said her life had been torn to pieces by the incident, which was viewed millions of times when the video went viral on social media. I certainly will never strike a horse, discipline a horse in that manner because, um, um, what's it? I was, I certainly will never strike a horse, discipline a horse in that manner because my life has been torn to pieces as a result of that four second decision she said adding that she had received death threats and been forced to go into hiding my intention was to discipline bruce in the moment so that he does not do it again there was minimal contact and it was so quick and so short this time because we caught you on camera this time. If Bruce Almighty was doing anything to you, it's because it knows that you're a raggedy bitch. And so Bruce, when when animals act out in that way, it's because you've been batting them, you've been batting them up previously. And so they have to defend themselves because they know that you're nasty and you're rancid and you're moldy. They know that. Um, Mold said she still owned the horse and that he lived an idyllic life. No, not when you're hitting it that he lived an idyllic life with her family. She claimed the pony was standing on a grass verge at the side of the road with a child holding onto its lead rope when it unexpectedly started moving into the road, dragging the child behind. The child let go of the rope and when the horse was recaptured by moulds, she kicked it in the chest and, and struck its face several times. See, now she's mentioning a child, so I should feel like, oh, but why were you letting the child hold the reins in the first place? And I is the child in the room with us now? The equine um, veterinary surgeon, Suzanne Green, told the court the horse would have been in pain and fear and said Mould's actions were not proportionate or appropriate. That horse has got nowhere to go. He's not fighting back. He's not hurting her. He's just trying to get away, she said. An examination of the animal on 16th of November 2021 showed the horse had no physical or external injuries and was in good health. When interviewed by an RSPCA inspector after the incident, Mould said, Bruce is a child's pony and I'd left him stood in a safe place with, two, with the two children. If I hadn't chastised him and he continued to behave in this manner, then it would not be appropriate for him to be handled by children. No, because you, there were other ways that you could have let him know. You could have let Bruce know that you wanted him to behave differently. And, what you're, and you're wrong because violence begets violence. If you're treating him that way and he knows that it's associated with children, he's going to feel resentment towards the children and one day might just b kick back in their in, in their chest he might just so you don't solve the thing by being violent towards the the horse you don't she said she and her family had received death threats including one in a christmas card delivered to her home over the incident claiming in her evidence that her family had to go into hiding for several days due to the backlash she said it is profoundly troubling that in this digital age misinformation can spread like wildfire leading to premature judgments and jeopardizing the lives and careers of innocent individuals you're not innocent a snippet of the video was taken out of context and manipulated to paint a picture of me that is entirely at odds with who I am. I adore my animals and have dedicated my life to teaching and nurturing young minds. It was heart-wrenching to be so wrongly and publicly maligned. Don't go anywhere near children again. It is crucial to understand that what we see on the internet, especially on platforms like Twitter and Facebook, is often a fragmented version of the truth. The jury's decision today has vindicated me. However, the damage from the last 20 months trial by social media is irreversible. The loss of my career, the hand-delivered death threats to me and my children, 
and the distress caused to my family cannot be undone. My loved ones have had to watch powerlessly as our lives unraveled based on falsehoods. Um, she also went on to say at some point that there are two sides to a story. And I wish I could get Bruce in here, but you, you're holding him captive. I wish I could get Bruce in here so he could go, bitch. Because, and it's, I feel so hypocritical because I say this all the time. I really don't like animals being harmed, but how can I talk as somebody that eats meat? Do you know what I mean? Like, this is why I know I have to divest from meat eating. And because it, I felt so sad when I watched that video, I felt so sad because the horse is better than you. Like that pony is better than you and can actually badge you up, but it's taking your abuse. I don't know, ma'am. And of course, I don't want anyone to receive death threats because I'm going to go on to that shortly. Um, and what I've experienced as a result of Novara Media and GB News. But I just wanted to point out that, no, don't go around hitting horses. I don't believe you. I don't believe you. And I don't, I just don't feel comfortable with the way that you were kicking up and slapping that horse. I just, I just don't think that you should be around young children that can't speak up for themselves because you'll come up with another excuse as to why it was okay to brock them up too. So stay far away. Um, I saw another troubling story about the research. Is it the research medical council? Medical research council medical research council and how they were i have to find a story because it was so worrying like and this is the thing people will jump up and be like oh why are you saying that this has anything to be to do with race it's so incredibly reductive like your mom's pussy you dickhead but you'll say that when we know medical racism exists and the misogyny generally across the board as it pertains to the medical industry is so rampant but we're crazy for thinking such according to some of you um yeah really 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 worrying story um i hope i can find it because uh, there's so much to cover here oh god search for women in coventry in 1960s um who were fed radioactive chapatis Researchers are looking for South Asian women who were fed radioactive chapatis in the 1960s as part of a study looking at iron absorption. Um, Taiwo Owatemi, um, um, Owatemi um, MP said she was deeply concerned about the study in Coventry funded by the Medical Research Council, MRC. It seems that consent was not sought nor proper information given to women at the time they took part. An MRC spokesperson said an independent inquiry had examined questions raised. The independent report published in 1998 found research practice, uh, practice ethics and regulation had moved on significantly and had directly resulted in new guidance, the MRC said. The inquiry report was commissioned in response to a documentary on Channel 4 in 1995, which raised concerns about participants, including pregnant women, being able to consent to the experiments. Um, it was reported in 1995 that about 21 women were involved in the experiment after seeking medical help from a city GP for minor ailments. The study was carried out due to concerns of widespread anemia among Asian women and researchers suspected traditional South Asian diets were to blame. Chapatis containing iron-59, an iron isotope with a gamma-beta emitter were delivered to participants' homes. They would later be invited to a research facility in Oxfordshire to have their radiation levels assessed. It was reported that the MRC said the study proved that Asian women should take extra iron because the iron in the flour was insoluble. Um, in a post on X, formerly known as Twitter, oh God, Ms. Owatemi, MP for Coventry Northwest, said there continued to be deep worry amongst the South Asian community in the city. She said a University of Warwick researcher was now seeking to identify women affected, adding she was deeply disturbed they may have been targeted for research in 1969 without being able to give informed consent. Um, I will be calling for a debate on this as soon as possible after Parliament returns in September, she said, adding it had seemed no follow up. Um, morbid um, um what's it adding it had seemed no follow-up morbidity study had been performed to look at the long-term medical effects 
Mr Owatemi added it would be followed by full statutory inquiry into why the recommendation of the MRC report to identify the women affected was never followed up. Um, in a statement posted online on Wednesday, the MRC said it remained committed to the highest standards, including commitment to engagement, openness and transparency. What the fuck does that even mean? The issues were considered following the broadcast of the documentary in 1995 and an independent inquiry was established at that time to examine the questions raised, they added. So you're basically saying that they've already checked us before. Yeah, we fucked around and what? And this is the thing. Why could, how could and why did they target South Asian women in that way? You'll tell me that race had nothing to do with it. That ethnicity had nothing to do with it. You're going to tell me that, right? You the same pussy class that say that you have an independent media platform. You fucking bastards. Because just because you fail to see the ways in which um, the medical industry is inherently anti-black and brown people, just because you can't see it doesn't mean that the rest of us fucking can't. And that so therefore we notice things that might go over your stupid heads even though some of you, one of you or so, however many of you, you're part of that community. Rancid cunts. I hope that um, something comes of this. And I'm so, so sorry to all of the women who are much older now, who um, took part in that, that horrendous, to me, it feels like eugenics, who took part in that study without knowing what they were taking part in. They just thought, oh, look at them giving us chapatis. Not knowing what you not knowing what was being done. I'm disgusted. Because it reminds me of the um the Tuskegee trials as well. How our non-white bodies just seem like a great place, um, you know, testing ground for so many things. And I've mentioned it on this show before. Before we had the concentration camps rolled out and the chambers, the gas chambers and all of that rolled out in Germany and around Europe, they were first tested in Namibia. So don't ever in your fucking life, in your godforsaken bitch of a life, ever try to test me or my knowledge about how things interconnect just because you want to be the poster children of some radical left wing when actually you're only pushing forward ever pushing forward white supremacist ideology fuck you for an eternity let's get on let's get on with it so I wanted to share that and my heart goes out to all of those people and if you've got family that were around um in them times around Coventry um and they are south asian encourage them to get in contact if they you know happen to be a part of that study by and not realizing it because the long-term effects are necessary to examine because i feel like a class action suit is right in there because there might be a, a, um, like ailments and things happening in your bloodline in your family right now that's directly linked to what these motherfuckers were doing in the first place um, in another tale of wildness and patriarchy, Luis Rubiales, is it? Um, basically, um, that um, FA president of the Football Association. Um, FIFA suspends embattled Spanish football chief amid World Cup kiss row. I don't like why, how they call it kiss row as if like we are we are torn i mean some people feel like they're torn as to what they saw but a lot of people saw what they saw he, louise went to go and kiss jenny hermosa or is it hermosa against her will like okay spain have won the world cup england yeah but spain have gone on to win the world cup the women's world cup all right so they're celebrating collecting the trophies and you decide to kiss the captain on the lips out of nowhere if this is what you're doing in public, I don't know what you've done in private to other women who work for or around you. Because And to see the way that the Spanish Football Association were even prepared, they were prepared to take um, Jenny to court, the, the, the woman that was kissed, the, they were ready to take her to court for lying about consenting to the kiss we all watched it on tv like she didn't she just came up to come and shake hands like she didn't consent to anything what and then he louis talks about oh but i've done it to my daughters and i somebody needs to take your daughters away from you because this is wild 
Despite despite mounting pressure on the head of Spanish football um, to stand down after he kissed Spain's Jenny Hermoso, Hermoso, which... Um, did I say Jesse? No, I said Jenny. Jenny Hermoso, which um, she said she didn't consent to. Luis Lu um, Rubiales has since said he will defend himself so that the truth prevails and complete innocence is proven. We saw you. Can you not see the nature of patriarchy when we saw the man do the thing? Yet he's telling us to our face that you imagined it. Telling all of us that it's imagined. But now if some of us, if we now say that this is inextricably linked to sexism and patriarchy, I bet that your wayward bitch of a network will now turn around and be like, it's incredibly reductive to say that this happened because they're women, because we actually need to look at the structure of football as a whole to understand what's really happening. Fuck you in this life and every life that you'll use to make up the fuckery that you've done in this one. Woo. Woo. Oh, Chile. The 46-year-old ref has refused to step down despite mounting pre a pressure from within Spanish football and the government. He grabbed player Jenny Hermoso and kissed her on the lips during the awards ceremony following Spain's victory over England. I can't celebrate any colonizers. I'm so sorry. Last, um, last Sunday in Sydney, Australia. Um... FIFA said it had suspended Mr. Rubiales um, from all football related activities at national and international level. He has also been ordered not to contact or attempt to contact Hermoso for the duration of his suspension. This suspension, which will be effective as of today, is for an initial 90 um, initial period of 90 days pending the disciplinary proceedings. The Spanish Football Federation confirmed it had received notification of the suspension from FIFA and that Mr. Rubiales will defend himself so that the truth prevails and complete innocence is proven. Vice Pre President Pedro Roca will be acting president, the Federation added. Um, for, for, football, federal, I don't know, whatever. Um, 11 coaching and technical staff across Spanish football have resigned. In a statement on Saturday afternoon, the 11, who did not include women's head coach, um, or Jorge Vildas, said they condemned the actions of Luis Rubiales at last weekend's medal ceremony. They supported the account of Jenny, um, Jenny Hormoso and um, criticized unacceptable statements made by Mr. Rubiales. Um, the staff said Mr. Rubiales' account does not reflect the events which followed Spain's victory over England. Um, the standoff comes amid an escalating row. Hermoso, a 33-year-old forward, said in no moment did she consent to the kiss. She and her teammates had vowed not to play for Spain again days after the, um, winning the World Cup for the first time. And this is how men ruin everything. A victory. While I said I don't celebrate colonizers, I'm, you know, any... The victory, the women have gone further than some of the men sometimes in a lot of these situations. But I'm not saying that about Spain because I know Spain has won some things, whatever. What I'm saying in this situation is that these women have done something great. Their moment was stolen from them because a man thought that he could, he could just violate boundaries and touch this woman anyhow. Have you lipsed men like that? Louise, what, because you're, you said that it's, it doesn't mean anything and it's just the passion of the moment. Have you lips the men? Have you lips the Spanish, the male Spanish footballers? Have you lips them like that? Because if you haven't, then you need to shut the fuck up. Because you did it. If, if Unless you can show me a video of you lipsing the men, lipsing the men to that extent, out of nowhere, grabbing them up and lipsing them. And saying that, oh, it's just, it's just, um, you know, it's just the passion. Um, we're so happy. It was just joyful. If you can't show me you lipsing men like that, then that means you did it because Jenny's a woman. And you thought that that was okay. Thus, this is sexist. Oh, God. She and her teammates have vowed not to play for Spain again days after winning the World Cup for the first time. A momentous occasion fucked up by a man. The country's football federation has stood by its president, who says the kiss was consensual and threatened legal action to defend him. So, for those of you who run media platforms and you struggle to use um, the power of common sense and comprehension, can you see how a system can support somebody doing wrong. Luis Rubiales is in the wrong. 
the football federation in Spain gathered around him to say, no, he's not in the wrong, even though the rest of us saw him being in the wrong, especially as women, we saw him being in the wrong. They then threaten legal action. So they try to use the power of the system against the individual who has already been harmed by the system or an individual within that system. So if you can understand it about sexism, why can your brains not fucking click to understand it about race and how you are complicit in white supremacy through your actions for however long, but specifically your actions over the past few weeks or this week in particular? In a lengthy statement issued earlier Saturday, the Federation showed a series of images it claimed show Mr. Rubi and Rubiales was not lying. Mr. President's feet are ostensibly lifted from the ground as a result of the player's actions, the statement said. The tests are conclusive. Mr. President has not lied. Um, the RFEF and Mr. President will demonstrate each of the lies that are spread either by... Um, someone on behalf of the player or if applicable by the player herself the statement threatened legal action saying that playing for the national team is an obligation for all members of the federation if they're called up is this war is this fucking war what do you mean if i'm called up i can't play out i hurt my foot i'm not playing what now i'm on my period no i can't play what now the federation said it regretted the row was taking away from the world cup success it wanted to celebrate Mr. Rubiales claimed the kiss was mutual and with consent at a meeting of the Spanish Football Federation's General Assembly on Friday. He added he was the victim of a witch hunt by false feminists. Wow. After that, false feminists, you know what that sounds like? Anti-white racist. Yeah. Reverse racist. After rapidly repeating, I won't resign five times. And then people clapped for him when he said this. They clapped. In the version of events Mr. Rubiales gave to the assembly, he said Hermoso had lifted him up in celebration and he asked her for a little kiss and she said yes. The kiss was the same I could give one of my daughters. I am so disgusted. He said he would defend his honour in court against politicians, including two ministers who called his kiss an act of sexual violence, which it was. Um... Mr. Rubiales cannot be sacked by the government, but the head of the state run sports council, Victor Franco, says it will use a legal procedure in a sports tribunal. We want this to be a me too of Spanish soccer, Mr. Franco said. People have gathered outside the Spanish Soccer Federation in Madrid to protest against Mr. Rubiales, with some carrying banners or holding up red cards. Before the kiss, he had grabbed his crotch in a lewd victory gesture from the section of dignitaries at the stadium with Spain's Queen Letizia and the 16-year-old Princess Infanta Sofia standing nearby. Um, the controversy has overshadowed the final and Spain's first triumph in the global tournament. The team arrived back in Madrid after delivering a heartbreak to England. Well, <laughs> with Olga Carmona's first half... Um, goal proving too much for the Lionesses. Oh, Hermoso started the match in the World Cup final in Sydney, but was denied the chance to get on the score sheet after a penalty was stopped by England's goalkeeper, whatever her name is. Um, I know the name. I'm just not reading it. Um, all very sad. I, I said she was the captain. I don't actually know. Child, I, I stopped following. I don't care anymore. Um, about the whole football as a whole, but I care about this. I care about this and how women are harmed all of the time. I care about this and I'm disgusted. But again, it's showing us how all of these things play out in real time. So going from one alleged predator to another predator, I guess, from So You Mad, we now move on to Straw of the Week, a.k.a. Suck Your Mum. Tim Westwood was booked to perform at or to play at two carnival parties. So to the two uh, promoters or whoever who booked him Westwood, I need you to suck your mother dry till you pass out. That's what I need. It says here there is anger at Tim Westwood being scheduled to host two parties over the carnival weekend. The controversial DJ has been accused of six reports of sexual offences against black women. So now 
let's let's take it back do 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 teaching time with kelechi hello everyone welcome today we're going to learn how racism and sexism intersect to give us misogynoir I just spoke to you about Luis Rubiales and what he did to Jenny Hermoso and how the whole system was trying to pretend like Luis Rubiales did nothing wrong because the system supports patriarchy. Tim Westwood has been accused numerous times of sexually violating black girls. Due to the constructs and the mechanisms surrounding racism, as well as the constructs and mechanisms that uphold sexism, when these two combine racism and sexism, black girls and women are rarely protected and are frequently harmed. I hope that explains everything for you fucking idiots that can't seem to get it. There is anger at Tim Westwood being scheduled to host two parties over the carnival weekend. The controversial DJ has been accused of six reports of sexual offences against black women, which are being investigated by police. Westwood has strenuously denied all the allegations. This weekend, Westwood is due to host two parties in South London. As hundreds of thousands of people are expected to attend this year's Notting Hill Carnival in West London. The first event, which is called the Getting Litty Day Party, is scheduled to take place on Saturday, a Saturday at the Ravensbury in Croydon, South London. Westwood is also scheduled to host a carnival after party on Bank Holiday Monday, 28th of August at Hatch Nightclub in Lewisham. South London, I'm so disappointed in you. So, so disappointed in you because North, West, and I'm always gunning them lot because I don't even consider them sometimes, not North, but West, to be part of like London. But then Croydon, I don't know. Oh, well. Anyway, South London, I'm so disappointed because of all of us, of all the boroughs, of all the sides, we should not be the one that's encouraging this fuckery. It's that we, even the weakest among us, are better than the best of them. Why is he here? Why? His age mates are using their freedom pass. Do, are they, did they take freedom passes away? I don't even know what the Tories are doing anymore. But your age mates are using freedom pass to explore and to learn about the history of London. You, you're there preying on black women, playing, preying on black girls. Anyway. Oh, this one. I'm not reading her name. She's rather nasty very nasty to me um yuck well i won't be promoting her that's for sure very very nasty woman um anyway don't need to read on for the rest of that all i'm saying is that he shouldn't be hosting day parties he shouldn't be hosting night parties he shouldn't be hosting parties if he wants to go and do any party let him go and do it at one of the nursing homes like let him go and be there with his friends like don't you don't need in fact don't be there because you're so predatory i don't want you to go and harm other vulnerable people i don't want to be like matt hancock saying to you that nursing homes are great places for you to just go and um, mistreat people so don't go there either don't go anywhere can they just not keep him inside the house just keep him there anytime he tries to go out an alarm goes off and goes no baby get back inside no tight pom poms for you no more leave the black girls alone no baby that's what i want so no no to tim and everybody who's booked him suck out tim westwood you suck out too um well that covers that part let's get to the nitty gritty of this week my supreme straw of the week many straws in fact as i've alluded to throughout this episode my straw of the week goes out to gb news goes out to quasi Quateng, goes out to dan wooten goes out to navara media namely aaron bastani nay um aaron peters that was his he changed his surname because he wanted to have his dad's iranian surname maybe to make him feel a bit more ethnic um even though his mum raised him for most of his life but you know he wanted to patriarchy connect with his dad yeah um 
So Aaron Bastani, aka Aaron Peters, as well as Michael Walker, your a non-entity, but we'll put you in there too. Um, why am I mentioning all of these people? It's important that I mention these people because of the number of threats and um horrid messages I've received over the past few days. Why did I get those messages? Well, because Aaron and Michael, as well as Ash, who all um, deal and are involved in the godforsaken Novara media that they claim is meant to be some kind of leftist independent news platform. But clearly they've been um, corrupted um, over time because um, increasingly, worryingly, they seem to want to um, overshadow and um, repress or harm black women um specifically it's becoming more and more noticeable it's played off as this little faux pas online but it's actually rather sinister but we'll get into that some more so as you remember last week i posted the video um of um about lucy letby and my um observations about the way that the media were talking about her as if you know the, oh my god this angel we just wouldn't expect it we can't believe this can't believe this and I was like what do you mean you can't believe it what do you mean you can't believe it as if because what's the subtext really what you're saying to us that you can't believe is that she's a white woman and she's done this when actually if we look at it historically there have been lots of incidents of violence from white women towards a lot of people so it's not like an anomaly it is something that very like it, there were laws that had to be put in place um during um the times of you know the transatlantic slave trade because the white women as the plantation owners kept killing the black children they would beat them so much torture them so much that they would kill them so laws had to be put in place to stop them not because they cared about the humanity of the children but because they were destroying property and so you'll now be like, but I don't see how that's relevant now. And that is why I'm your fucking mummy. That is why I am the mummy of this. This is why I'm your fucking mummy. And all of you lot are my little babies. Petulant, petulant, nasty. No, I won't give birth, birth to nasty, petulant babies. In fact, I rebuke it. Oloran Maje, I rebuke it. But all of you are my fucking sons because you can't connect the dots and so some of you have been used to getting patted on the back and patted on the head by white liberals for so long that that, that they don't actually want any change they want somewhere comfortable where they feel like they've tolerated seeing your face telling them the things that you've told them enough and they feel like well that's enough work for me so you're like their little golden child so they'll they'll they you're about as much you're about as far as they'll go in terms of their critical thinking which isn't very far at all so they'll tolerate you where all of you are now vexed it's because it's like oh but here's somebody making salient points and doing this and doing that and getting views for it. Ooh, we're so angry. We're so mad. Black women shouldn't be talking. We're so angry. We're so mad. So we're going to try and undermine what she says and feed her to our very right wing hate followers to have somebody that they can direct their hatred towards. That's exactly what happened. And then through um, being posted or um, quote tweeted by Aaron Bastani, Nay Peters, um, as well as Michael Walker, by being posted by these um, people at Novara Media, it meant that GB News were then like, oh, what's that over there? Because you all regularly go on to GB News, right? Especially you, Ash, you lot reg regularly go on to GB News, right? Because you're the, you're just, you're that, you're that tipping point. Like, oh, we've got a balanced view. We've gotten everything. Now, everybody's in bed with everyone. I went on GP News once because they were trying to talk some shit about sex workers and it wasn't going to happen on my watch. After that, they're not seeing me again. But you lot are regularly on there because you lot are actually all friends behind the scenes. And, and this is actually a joke to all of you. Like our lives are at risk and you are all using this as some kind of weird game of um, checkers. And I don't get it. I absolutely don't get it. If you lack nuanced thought, if you lack critical thinking skills, that is your fucking problem. But then to now quote tweet me to involve me in your mess and make it out like, oh, well, how can people watch this? If you don't understand it, thousands of other people, millions of other people understood. You just didn't understand. So just accept that you're silly and you're stupid and keep it moving. But then to 
incite that people target me and then to incite that then Dan Wooten then talks about me on GB News and calls me the new face of bigotry and racism, anti-white racism in the UK. And then that results in me getting all, to, all manners of threats and messages. I hold you all personally accountable and I will, one way or another, be seeking legal action. I absolutely will because you absolutely fucked with the wrong one. And you can't say that you didn't know what you were doing because let's just bring it up now. Even the, the head, is it the head of the Royal College of Nursing says that this would, um, Lucy Letby would have definitely been caught sooner if she was a person of colour. Um, the doctor, the consultant, um, Dr. Ravi, um, he also stated that he feels like this would have been different were it a person of colour. But somehow, these are actually people that work in the medical profession. But you lot that don't work in the fucking medical um, profession, but you just hate seeing black women make points. You decided that you know better and that you'll quote tweet me in order to cause and to send a pile on my way. It will never be well with you. And the moment that your ears hear my voice as I'm saying this to you, I want you to know that from this very moment, everything that you love in your life is going to crumble. Everything that you hold dear will start falling to pieces the misery that you already feel by targeting somebody like me because you could only miserable people can do the kind of things that you lot have done the misery that you feel today i speak it over your life i speak it over the lives of everyone that you fucking care about that that misery will be amplified a thousand fold that that's what you that's all you'll ever know because I mind my fucking business. I give my observations. I give my breakdowns on my channel in my corner of the internet. Where you got vexed was the fact that people were listening to me and you saw the views because you're such you're such bottom feeders. You're such nasty bitches that 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 work for clicks. That's all you care about. Like you're here intellectually popping, booty popping for, for clicks, for engagement. So you can't take it when somebody just actually wants to make a point and keep it moving. I can't help it that I'm the people them sugar. Anyway, so Michael Walker, Michael L, what's it? Michael J S Walker is his inst, um, Twitter handle. It says um, he quote, quote tweets me. Lucy Letby's violence was clearly not the standard. So weird this stuff gets thousands of likes on here. It's important the thousands of likes, and this is what I'm saying. You're such jealous, nasty bitches. All you're focused on is the likes. Because if it had gotten 10 likes, you would have minded your business, kept it moving. But because all of you, you feed, like you get hard over, over engagement, over analytics, over algorithms, right? You lot get hard over that. So seeing the engagement is what was really, really doing you. And you wanted to now start dissenting. You wanted to undermine what i was doing this is called misogynoir this is called anti-blackness you're all fucking racist you're raging racists who are who are here cosplaying as any sort of um progressive movement you're not progressive in the slightest you're all nasty because let me say this and i mean this none of us are free unless we are all free but by you doing what you've done you don't actually want black women to be free you do not want black women to be safe you want black women to be harmed hence why you did what you did hence Hence why. Hence you did what you did. Aaron followed it up with some stuff you see on here is obviously obs um, absurd and yet it gets thousands upon thousands of retweets. Can you see again? You fucking bitches. Can you see again? That all you care about, you're so focused, you're so preoccupied with the level of engagement my video got. It's not about what I said, because if you listened all the way to the end, you fucking cunts, you fucking dangerous cunts. If you listened all the way to the end, you would actually literally hear me say, I'm not even saying that all white women go around killing. I'm saying that the same system that protected Lucy for so long is the same system when people are in workplaces and white women cry. These people are the ones that get into trouble and not the white women. I've just put in an interview of you earlier on in this um, episode where I'm speaking to Syra and I'm speaking to Regina about this very same thing this stuff is studied this stuff is researched but because you saw a black woman delivering it you decided that oh you know what don't want to hear her speaking let's all attack it will never be well with you and I'm so fucking fed up of you all trying to hide be behind intellectualism when actually you just fucking hate black women because you lot would have never ever never done this to a black man you would have never done this to a black man you would have you wouldn't because you still have that perception in your head about black men 
about this and that about masculinity so you wouldn't have wanted to try your luck but you're like oh we know who we can try it with let's go and try it with a black woman let's go and try it with other women of color because we saw strategically how you were going around and who you were choosing to um to attack watch a baby murdering nurse is fortunately not the standard she is fortunately an anomaly and therefore you'd be wrong again You'd be wrong. She's not an anomaly. You fucking idiot. You stupid fucking piece of shit. You're wrong again. Because then a professor actually came out and said, actually, according to what we've studied, Lucy Letby is actually the standard for female serial killers. She's white, usually Christian. They usually start off in their 20s to 30s, usually attractive or average looking, and they usually work in healthcare. So by that metric, I was actually 100% correct. I want, if I don't get a written apology from every fucking body, all of you will see, we will see each other in court. You fucking pricks will see each other in court because the things that I've received over the past few days, nobody should have to receive. I have a fucking child. You fucking cunts. You fucking pieces of shit. And I swear to God, I swear to God, and I haven't even gotten to you, you fucking Ku Klux Quarteng. I haven't even gotten to you, you piece of shit. If anything should happen to me, I want it noted now that you, Aaron Bastani, also known as Aaron Peters, you, Michael Walker, you, Ash Zakar, you fucking bitch, all of you, Dan Wooten, Kwasi Kwarteng, GB News, all of you and your higher ups, I want all of you to be charged. All of you because this has gone on for too long you don't think this is a fucking puppy show that you can be doing whatever you like and speaking on people in very wild ways and putting them in harm's way because apparently black women are just fodder it's all right for things like this to happen to black women fuck all of you i'm enraged because here i am speaking truth to power none of you not a single one of you has the courage to do what i do and to do it with such precision to sit down and do the research that's necessary to do this week in week out you all sit there like, oh my God, climate crisis. Oh my God, oil spills. Which demographic do clim does climate justice or um, climate injustice and oil spills, all of them things, who does it affect disproportionately? But you don't want to speak on that because you keep stopping short you're stopping at bus stop a i'm going all the way to the bus terminal i'm finishing the entire route yeah we are not the fucking same and you ash i don't know where you thought ash the car that you've grown wings and i'm glad that you deleted the tweets from back in the day where you used to fawn over me because even you know that i'm your fucking mummy and it's even funny that a lot of you you'll follow me follow me follow me be begging it you'll be following me and then the moment that you get your first interview something goes scone scone in your head the moment you make it onto the TV for the first time or whatever, something goes scorn scorn in your head and then you start seeing me as some kind of nemesis, some kind of adversary, some kind of, um, um, you know, competitor. We're not in the same fucking arena. We are not in the same fucking arena. We're not even in the same, we're not in the same race. We're not in the same fucking arena. I don't have to compete. I know what I know and I stand in my truth as is divine, as I'm blessed to do because of my ancestors. I don't come into you lot's corner. I haven't even ever mentioned your name. I don't, I don't bother with you. I find a lot of you irrelevant. But for some reason, when you lot see somebody shining and you're not even seeing the shining, the glory, you're seeing fucking numbers. I've spoken more truth on videos that have got 200 views, 20 views even. This podcast on YouTube, is e it's even small numbers even. The audio version of the podcast, yeah, thousands and thousands of people, thousands of people listen, yeah. But even then, I'm just doing what I'm doing and I'm minding my business. What is your problem? To then bring people my way, because let's look at the trail of events. You mentioned me, Aaron, Michael from Novara Media, apparently progressive, but clearly not because you want to actively harm black women. You mentioned me. And then this one ash decides to do her own in a in a slightly different way and you refer to something as incredibly reductive it's your mother's pussy that's incredibly reductive fucking cunt so all of you gathered together and wanted to aid a pylon on me 
and then now in your comments you're agreeing with people that you should never have said it incredibly reductive but you're not deleting the tweets why because you got the engagement that you wanted from it so you got the pat on the back that you wanted from the whites that's what you wanted all along for the white people to say good girl good girl and this isn't the first time that you tried black women when you try to usurp and co-opt this um, hashtag say her name you try to take that hashtag and then you were denigrating and trying to speak badly and vilifying the people that were telling you this hashtag is specifically for black women who have been harmed specifically for them and you're talking about oh well why are we making everything um intellectual identity da 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 that shows how cynical your mind has become when you can't understand the nuance uh, of the fact that black women are regularly uh, they're regularly erased in our society the harm that black women face in our society is rarely talked about Breonna Taylor we're still trying to get justice for Breonna Taylor so many Sarah Reed over here Nicole and Bibber Henry um, Nicole Smallman and Bibber Henry there are so many things that I joy Gardner like there are so um, there are so many things that have happened across the world at, specifically against black women and yet we're still screaming we're still screaming that they're being forgotten hence the hashtag say her name so for you to come in such a callous way on the internet because you feel like you're that it girl on the internet that you'll say something and the people in your corner will agree with you do you ever wonder why they agree with you do you ever sit down and wonder why they're like yeah good point that you made there could it possibly be because you're also helping them to forward the ideology of white supremacy and that it's okay to erase black women have you ever considered that we're not we're not in the same grade we're not the same we're not at the same reading level we're not at the same reading level we can't be because people everyday people understood my point about lucy Leppi. they understood if you'd watched the whole video you would too would understand but you didn't care about that because you were frothing at the mouth over the engagement that you were seeing the video get you that you saw the video getting and you said oh black woman making points and it's not me i'm not the center of attention <laughs> i'm the sun baby i'm the sun you're barely just catching a little bit of my rays i'm the fucking sun disgusting behavior so going back to that your three of you gather like a trifling trifecta of fucking turnips you gather together start undermining what's being said by myself as well as other black women and women of color who and people of color generally who are calling out and being very very clear that no there is a pattern here people who actually work in the medical profession are also saying yes 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 there is a pattern here but you've already done the damage right even though you michael decided to delete your tweet and the same way that you deleted the tweet is the way that all your blessings that could ever find you in this life from this day onwards they've been deleted they've been deleted as well your name will be erased from the book of life you'll never know goodness you'll never know mercy in this life i promise you i promise you right so the damage has already been done dan wooten has already picked that up and then they want to run it on gb news okay so i say to them they've messaged my agent and said well can collect come on we want to know her fee um to defend her comments that she made about lucy let be and speak with dan wooten me and again this is what i mean about you bottom feeding fucking bitches you lot saw engagement as well you saw engagement you're like oh people oh look at people listening to her there are other people who made similar points that i made but what because they didn't get the same number of views they didn't get the same number of retweets and everything you're not telling them to come on your show you want me to come because you want me to redirect my audience to you i unlike the rest of these motherfuckers i understand business unlike the rest of these motherfuckers like i've got common sense so i'm not coming onto your fucking show and so i then send my agent over i'm like this is they give me a right to reply this is my reply and i basically said that there are certain people that are working on this show right now who are being um who need to understand sexual consent as well as how race as a construct works when you lot have done the necessary reading then you can try to engage me in a debate but all of you lack critical um, thinking skills you lack any sort of like critical race theory skills so i'm not the person that you need to be speaking to right now but i encourage everybody who can and is able to who has them and is able to to wash their legs you didn't read that out instead you went and took one of my tweets where i said oh guys i'm saddened by being accused of being a racist i haven't got a racist bone in my body can you not see the irony i'm basically regurgitating what you lot say all of the time oh my god i'm saddened by being called a racist i haven't got a racist bone in my body be kind you lot don't know how to be kind kind you're proving my point in real time 
See how you're all complicit in white supremacy. You're diverting the attention away from a depraved murderer who killed babies because you can't you can't sit with the discomfort of seeing the face of a white woman being um, convicted of such. You're redirecting, misdirecting your anger at the black people, the people of color who are calling it out. Can you not see that is white supremacy in action to try to silence anybody who's making it obvious that there is a clear pattern happening here and that pattern su like supports and upholds a particular framework that is oppressive for all of us. What are you not getting? And this is why I say I'm not your age mate. We're not the same reading level. So this is why it's also important that based on the threats that I've received over the past week, first of all, don't expect me to be coming back to come and record any other episode for now. That's that. I'll see how I feel. I might just show up next. Who knows? Who knows? But right now I'm done with this. I'm done with this because I'm tired of people being so fucking obtuse because I, I can't be doing the things that I need to be doing in terms of promoting my book because I don't want to have to wade through bullshit messages of threats that came to me because of you lot do you get that do you get that and I am as far as I'm concerned the biggest warrior for my child in this life he's got a great father but I'm the biggest warrior for my child in this life right since you are the ones that have caused for people to be sending me such messages that are threats to my life, that means that my child potentially would not have me in their life. I will take everything you own. I will take absolutely everything you fucking own. Because you can't keep getting away with this bullshit. It is tiring. It is tiring watching over and over again. You lot play obtuse. And you can do that on the little internet. On the internet. This racial, I feel, you better hope I never ever see any of you in person. Because I'll tell you about your class to your face. We will enter the same trouser that same day. I promise you we'll enter the same trouser. Because this is disgusting. And then GB News running it as if it's a proper segment. And now to come to you, Klu Klux Kwarteng, Kwasi Kwarteng, and you're meant to be an MP. You're meant to be a member of parliament. I swear it must go against ministerial code for you to be on a show with Dan Wooten. Dan, we haven't even talked about you. We haven't really talked about you, Martin Branning, using various pseudonyms, using various aliases to go and accost your, your, your co-workers, asking them to send you pictures, allegedly, that you'll pay this and that, allegedly. You're, you're one of the alleged biggest blackmailers in showbiz. And probably the reason that you're still left to work where you're working currently is due to the dirt that you might have on certain people, allegedly. Right? But you're allowed to just keep doing what you're doing. Uh, as far as we're concerned, from what your ex-boyfriend tweeted, you might be a predator, a sexual predator, but you're allowed to work. And then you're while you're working, you're speaking on my name. Like the other places have fired you and they're investigating you. But it's my name that you want to speak on. Is everything okay? Don't let me get Suella on the phone so she can take you right back to New Zealand, right? Take you right back. Who even wants to speak to Suella? That hawk faced demon. No, demon. I said demon, whatever. Oh. I'm done. I'm so, so done. I'm disgusted. I'm disgusted. You know, like, whenever I think of you lot, I just see like rats. I just see like rats like nibbling away at a house from this like from the basement. You're just nibbling away or something. You're just you're just nasty. You're just nasty people. But back to Kwasi. Kwateng. No, have I even finished? No, 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 no. Let me go back. I haven't finished. I wanted to talk about this um Aaron again. Aaron Bastani, aka Aaron Peters. I want to talk about him just a little bit more as the co-founder of Novara Media that started all of this and started um, sending the hate and the threats my way, um, which I consider to be, um, as much as I cuss them out all the time, a police matter, right? Because I can see in my algorithms exactly when I can see from the timestamps on the, the tweets and the emails that I've received exactly when they started. And it started from the moment you lot decided to start posting me. 
It was started from you. Before that, it was very normal day-to-day stuff. The vitriol, the vitriol started the moment you lot started doing what you were doing. So for that reason, you are directly responsible. Okay, so we continue. Um, It says here, Aaron Bastani, the co-founder of Novara Media, said on Twitter on Tuesday that he had been punched multiple times as he made his way into work. Aww. He said he had never seen the alleged attacker before, but that the man knew his name. Bastani said the alleged attack happened near his home and was preceded by the man shouted, preceded by the man shouting his name. So you wrote this on July 25th, 2023. That was this year this year july 25th at 2 2 2 p.m isn't that synchronicity oh i can't believe i can't quite believe what happened a few hours ago but on my i hope it and let me not i can't quite believe what happened a few hours ago but on my way to the train station was it at 11 11 to head into the novara media office a man i've never seen before screamed my name while passing by and assaulted me i was punched multiple times he wrote um he went on to say where is it fortunately i was able to pacify him with subsequent assi- um, assistant um, assistance from a passerby until the police arrived this is someone who knew my name fortunately there were multiple independent witnesses and the man is now being questioned by police this was a completely unprovoked attack near my home in broad daylight my suspicion is this was politically motivated this was a politically motivated physical attack on a journalist the background to this is that i've been targeted by the far right before it is a very real risk i live with Finally, my thanks to the police officers who arrived promptly and behaved with the utmost professionalism and courtesy. So what I want to understand, Aaron Bastani, a.k.a. Aaron Peters, I want to understand a couple of things. July 25th, that happened to you. So you know that you've got an audience of quite aggressive far right people because you say that you've had, you know, um, interactions with them previously. So if they would do it to you, I don't know about what you've got going on, um, but you are you have you are of um, white proximity, right? So you know that they would do that to you. So you thought that what would be great would be to retweet me, quote tweet me onto your timeline of these aggressive people, so I as a black woman could receive threats and possible violence. And this is why I'm saying that it's a police matter and it's a court matter, because by you publishing that on your Twitter page, you were already aware of the threat that existed on your page just towards you. And you're not even that radical. So what you've now put the danger you now put me in by quote tweeting me and letting them know that you disagree with me. What happens to me as a black woman? What happens to me as a black mother? What happens? Hmm? So this is why, no, there there will be consequences. We There has to be legal consequences because you were well aware of what was happening on your page before because you had been subject to it. And then you thought that you would feed me to your rabid dogs instead to save yourself. To be like, oh, whoa, 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 look at this person over here. Direct your hate this way. I hope that you're all listening in real time wherever you can report their media platform report them as individuals because this has gone on for too long i'll be it's, if if i'm not dealing with this person today abusing me on secret community pages on twitter i'm dealing with these people coming forward all for what all for what for just stating the things that i see and connecting the dots in real time this is the price you pay or the, the price you pay for being a black woman that has got sense and is happy to speak about it and also, you did your, uh, what is it, your PhD at the um, Royal Holloway, didn't you? So your PhD was about activism, right? And then there was some kind of um, MI6 involvement somewhere, maybe not with you directly, but it's just interesting that that would be the case. And I just wonder sometimes if some people are actually put into positions or in positions so they can do the very sinister bidding of the state in certain ways. 
But that's just me thinking about possible things for my book that might not have anything to do with this current conversation. I'm just thinking out loud. No Ed Sheeran. Um, back, back, back to you. So you did a PhD in activism or looking into activism and how it plays out online and whatever things go with that. So when you did that PhD, when you did, when you were doing that thesis, you also saw the risk that would come with that. Did you at any point break down who receives the most abuse on social media, the specific demographic that receives the most abuse on social media because Glitch did and they found that it's black women. And you then took your time, somebody who claims to have done a PhD, who claims to have learned unless you weren't paying attention the whole time. You claim to have learned what happens online when people use um, or mobilize through social media and whatever, and the internet, whatever the case may be. You claim that you've done that. But here you are inciting hatred towards a black woman because you're. when we break it down, all the way down, down, down to the ground, you were just jealous of my engagement. Why is she getting such views? Because I was able to bring things together in a way that you could never because your learning doesn't go back that far it doesn't whatever anger issues you've got towards your mother take it up with your mother don't ever bring it towards my fucking doorstep ever again whatever led you to be like i want to change my name i want to change my whatever the case may be take it up with your parents take it up with your ancestors keep my page my things out of your fucking consciousness because <laughs> we're gonna have to see each other sometime in court somewhere we're gonna have to see each other because i don't take threats on my life lightly i don't i don't i just don't and because i have proof that you also know that there are threats that that, that come with doing the things of speaking out on social media hmm. wrong 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 i just wanted to say that so done with aaron back to finally quasi quasi quateng so you went on dan wooten's show dan who still has to fight off allegations of being a sexual predator you went on that show i don't even know are you allowed to go on shows with somebody who is um, still being investigated for being a sexual predator are you anyway you went on anyway with your wonky hairline that looks like an unfinished motorway you went on there and you lot were having your talks and then they said who do you nominate for jackass of the week or of the day whatever the fuck and you said that you nominate me that me that you don't think you i believe what i said about lucy being the standard even though uh, marissa is it marissa harrison um who is a professor she wrote a guardian article where she was just like well actually she's correct and that came out days after or a day after you said your fucking shit. But I want to know when, a, where, where um, the time that an MP is allowed to call a private citizen um, a jackass. I want to know. Because some of you, I don't know where, what, what it is that, or like what you've been, been imbibing, what you've been imbibing. I don't know if it got stuck in your throat and therefore is stopping the blood circulation, making it to your head. You are so raggedy because you didn't you do your your phd on empire you did a phd on empire so where did you lose your way all of you phd phds i'm you know what i never want to do a phd if it means i'm going to come so far off route like you and aaron i never want to do one in that case if it means that it's going to fuck you up in such a way that you become a threat to the people that are actually just trying to make their way in this life you did that and then you decided to be a black tory Look at the state of you, the fucking state of you. And you're calling me a jackass, which I find funny for making very, very clear and well-researched observations. But you managed to be tricked by a company. It was a, they set it up. It was a fake company that said that they wanted your expertise and that they would pay you, what is it, £10,000 a day when the actual job didn't exist at all but you got duped so i wouldn't be surprised if you've probably even in the past fallen for those i'm a nigerian prince and i need your help to get my money out of my bank account i'm sure you've fallen for one or two of those as well you're the jackass you're the jackass you got played in real time and they videoed you they recorded you looking like a stupid greedy bitch they recorded you agreeing that you would work for ten thousand pounds a day oh i'm concerned about going to korea so <laughs> but you, were, you, were, you wanted to chop money. On top of the money that you were already getting as an MP, you wanted to chop extra money on top of that. But I'm the jackass. And they were playing you the whole time because the whole, the whole initiative wasn't even real. It wasn't even real. 
But I'm the jackass. Ha! You tanked the economy. Baby, you tanked the economy. But I'm the jackass. This is what misogynoir will do to you because it's so you're you're so kind of confused. You're so ignorant to the fact that you are a laughing stock. You're being laughed at by your white peers within the Conservative Party. You're a laughing stock. Liz Truss, who was as useless, she was as useless as a nail made of jelly. She was fucking useless. But she still even fired you. You haven't managed to finish taking her her pubic hairs from out between your teeth, but you thought you could talk on me. Kelechi Olua from Ilayo Okafo. Thunder fire your blood clot, you dickhead. Fool. You're a failure. You're a failure. You can't, you don't, you don't have anything to your name that even stands out. You're a failure. And you're clapped as well on top of that. Fucking stand innovation. Ugly bitch. But I'm the jackass. So you're joining a right-wing media channel and joining a right-wing media platform to incite hatred towards me after they're chopping up my content, whichever way. And I swear you owe me money for that, GB News, actually. Actually. You're chopping up my content any which way you like and then you're sitting there looking like a fucking slug talking about, oh, I'm a jackass. The violence... You don't even see the optics. And this is why I mean that you're a failure and you're a coward. You're ridiculous. You're sat um, in a, on a panel of white people and they get you, the black man, to be the one that puts that nail in. That's like, yeah, that, yes. Let me twist that knife in. Yes. To that black woman. Yes. But you're mad because what I do, what I keep doing in this life actually benefits you and your fucking idiotic self. Because I don't see you speaking about the disproportionate stop and search rates and how it affects black men and boys. I do that. I don't see you addressing the fact that knife crime is, is a public health situation and not a criminal situation. You're not dealing with it in that way. I am. So I'm very, very invested and concerned about the future of black men and boys. You are not. All you're hoping for is that you're getting to taste one pinky hued clitoris here and there. And that white men pat you on the back for being their good little doggy. Bitch. And anyone can come and say anything. You can all come and write your letters because you started this. I was minding my business. So if anyone wants to come and write any official letters of anything, anything, remember that you started this. You put my life at risk when you all decided to deliberately misconstrue and, 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 and deliberately misrepresent what I had said. You started it. We'll see each other where we'll see each other. We will. In February, Kwateng attended an online meeting of about 40 minutes, informing the interviewer that he was sitting in my office in Parliament. Kwateng was sacked as Chancellor last October by the then Prime Minister Liz Truss after his mini budget precipitated, um, um, yeah, precipitated a financial crisis. During a discussion about what the remuneration might be, Kwateng said he would not do anything for less than £10,000 a month. He said he would need to be compensated, particularly if I'm going to Korea, when he was told the firm was looking at a rate of £8,000 to £12,000 a day. He responded that they were numbers he could work with. Of course you can work with it, you stupid raggedy bitch. You were about to settle for £10,000 a month. Of course you'd say, yeah, you can handle eight to £12,000 a day. Um, it was agreed that if he went to Korea, he would he could invoice at £10,000 a day. Discussing his credentials, he said he had significant experience from his roles as a former business secretary and briefly as a chancellor. Look at briefly. Look at briefly. Briefly. The prospect of Kwateng citing his political track record for what appeared a lucrative role may anger homeowners who saw mortgage repayments rise because of his disastrous tenure at the Treasury. He discussed Brexit, the energy industry and Boris Johnson, with whom he said he might be able to arrange a meeting. Um, Matt Hancock also took part in that um meeting as well in her early march hancock um agreed to an online meeting for the advisory role um the telegraph had that week published his leaked cash cache of more than hundred thousand whatsapp messages but he seemed relaxed for the meeting with the fake foreign firm he said it had been quite a busy week but that march was the state start of hope we were wondering do you have a daily rate at the moment he was asked by the interviewer, posing as a senior business executive. 
I do. Yes, Matt Hancock replied. It's 10,000 sterling. The footage showing his rapid response to a question over fees is likely to spark fresh controversy over concerns MPs may be bolstering their finances in ways that may be counter to the interests of the consti um, constituents they serve. Hancock is an independent MP after he had the whip suspended for taking, um, after he had the whip uh, suspended for taking part in um, I'm a Celebrity, for which he was paid £320,000, with Rishi Sunak's spokesperson saying at the time that MPs should be working hard for their constituents. Hancock said in a meeting that he followed the spirit and letter of the parliamentary rules and would also require additional approval for the role because he had been a minister, but outside interests were permitted. He said he was mindful of the responsibility to serve his constituents. Um, so many of them got got. I'm sure I think they talked to some Labour people there or to, uh, different parties they talked to as well. But I like this kind of pranking, I think it's so necessary to show everybody's yash and to show what they're doing. Um, it's very sad, but big up the led by donkeys project, um, who conducted the uh, with, uh who conducted this with investigative reporter Anthony Barnett. Um, because people are facing a cost of living crisis and you've got the MPs that you have um, voted in doing what they like, asking for however amount of money. Because the thing is, if they accept the money from this sort of firm that's not real, but they clearly accept it from various firms that are real, they will be working to the interests of these firms. Right. So they don't really care about the constituents. And again, it makes me think about Grenfell and everything that happened there. But quasi Klu Klux Kwarteng, it'll never be well with you. Because where you felt like you were feeding me to the wolves to save yourself, to join them in a ha ha and key keying and trying to humiliate a black woman, it's the way that your black mother is humiliated by you. You're a disgrace. You're a disgrace and you're a coward and it will never, ever be well with you. While you persist in walking down this path of white supremacy, all you'll know is misery. All you'll know is dejection and every, every misery should come and find you. You will never know peace. As long as I keep breathing in and out, you will never know peace. Yeah, you won't. Because what you try to harm me is what you try to do. And so to reiterate again, because of the nature of the threats that I've received, I want it to be noted. Aaron Bastani, aka Aaron Peters, Ash Sakar, Michael Walker, Kwasi Kwarteng, Dan Wooten, GB News as a whole, all of you, should ev it's in everybody's best interest that I remain remain safe and cute. And me and mine remain safe and cute because should anything these are the people that must be charged these are the people that everybody must go after should anything happen yeah because we've seen it in real time how you're inciting for harm to come towards a black woman or because you're jealous you're fucking bitches jealous of likes jealous of views wow wow we are in hell if that's what it takes, we are in hell. Where people who don't understand things, you don't get how one thing links to another, but you just want to chat. In fact, me, I've even talked too long. I'm coming off this fucking thing. I've said everything I have to say. It is what it is. We'll be seeing each other in court. <laughs> but I'm very disappointed. But big up to everybody that's shown me so much support and love. I'm divinely protected. I know that. Like God continues to look after me and mine. I know that the ancestors ride with me greatly because I'm only ever doing what I'm asked to do, what I'm called to do and speaking from the heart. I don't trouble nobody. I don't expect anybody to trouble me. But, hmm. Oh, Malcolm X had some things to say. Let me tell you that. He had some things to say. Anyway, that's that. I have been Kelechi Okafo and this has been... S-Y-M, officially known as Say Your Mind, unofficially known as everybody that I mentioned, Suck Your Mum. I don't want to promote anything. You know where to find the things. Catch you on the flip side, maybe. Peace.
It's the Benz Brunani woman is Baby boys, baby girls, you need to hear this Help you sit down, sit down, receive this realness Make sure your cup's ready for the tea we are go sip it here Hard time scrolling for your long truants You might learn something you never know Could let you find And she's one of a kind Don't say you mind, say you mind